day. It's so early. <laughs> In the middle of the day. Oh, you East Coast people. Hey, are we live right now? I think we are. I think we're like, yeah. good morning, everybody. Welcome to Caliber Corner. This are is episode live? number. Yes, we are. Episode number 165, where we've got some low cost and budget friendly rifles. What options do we have? Um, in the age of post election pandemic pricing, where the $800 SKS rifle on Gunbroker is the new norm. Let's see if we can actually find a good deal. Is there any hope for those of you looking for an AR, an AK, a bolt action rifle, a semi automatic rifle, any kind of rifle? So, what's funny about this topic is this topic goes all the way back to May of 2017 when it was like a topic that we had on Caliber Corner, episode number three. And back then, we were talking about finding great pawn shop rifles for $200 and getting an AR for $350. Oh, the good old days. So less than three years later, prices have doubled, quadrupled, gone through the roof, but hope is not lost, and we're going to see if we can find you guys some good deals. But before we do that, let's go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves. I think we're going to start up with uh, the guy who's the most awake amongst all of us, Calvaris32 Special, joining us from the West Coast. How you doing today, sir? How's it going? Uh, it's a beautiful 6 a.m. morning here in, you know, in California, and uh, my coffee finished brewing so i'm happy right. i've got a cup of joe there you go there you go get that second cup down and then you'll be all fired up so all right okay also join us from the other side of the country uh over there on the east coast we got a little night strike going on night strike welcome thank you i appreciate you being here today how you doing man i don't have any coffee either i, I might have to go get some so <laughs> don't call me for anything you don't have some sanka up in the cupboard that you can just throw in a cup of hot water and enjoy can. some sanka no? No Senka? Okay. No decaf. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. You need to have some instant around just for emergencies. It like has some 100%, 100% caffeine. There you go. I agree totally, man. I mean, decaf co decaffeinated coffee, unless you got a health issue, it's a waste of time, man. It's not even worth it. It's a waste of water. Is what the, you're better off drinking water is what you should do instead. So that's right. Or be like one of those people that drinks tea. All right. Moving on over. Oh, wait. Nice strike. Anything you want to say? You got any shows you want to go ahead and plug? Anything you want to let us know about? It's been a while since you've been on here, so... Yeah, check out uh, check out the the show Travis ditched here miss Tuesday nights nine o'clock, and uh, you know Thursdays and Fridays over winter break. I'll be back for a couple weeks, I promise. And then once we hit summertime, it's all good. It's just uh, work obligations and the fact that I'm getting old and tired. So oh, I'm no, sorry, you man. Ditch me, I get it, I get it. I'm not interesting anymore. I get it. Mm -mm. Oh no, I still love you, Nice Rick. You're always going to be my my true love. But uh, you know, I. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Did I just say that? Anyway, uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll be making a comeback here on Tuesdays. Once I get stuff, you know, kind of get caught up on things, we'll take care of business. So, uh, and then you've also got the Thursday night strike and the Friday night strike and what the Saturday morning strike and the Sunday morning strike. Is that correct? No, dude, just, just sometimes and frequently Thursdays and All right. uh, most of the time Fridays. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So make sure you guys get over there, subscribe to Night Strikes channel, subscribe to Calaveras 32 Specials channel. Lots of good content for you guys. Also joining us from the East Coast, we got the southeastern part of the U.S. We got AWAG. AWAG, what's going on? Tony, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. So what you been up to these days, man? How's it going? How's uh, life treating you? You know, you know, just working my butt off, working for the industry, you know. Yeah. Getting, getting paid, going to get some cool new things soon. Gonna pick up a Vortex Razor HD. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a four and a half to twenty-seven power. That uh, for the for the money, it's a really really nice scope. How much are we talking here? Four fifty, six hundred, seven hundred? No. Oh, like twenty six hundred. Oh God! See, I don't know much. That's I don't go price. optics above like five hundred dollars. I don't even. I mean, they're great, yeah. but I no. don't usually bother. But no, no granted. That price it better be one of Vortex's American made scope. It is. Okay. They're hand assembled in. Oh, geez, where where is Vortex located? Oh, I don't even where, know where they're. I don't know where Vortex is located. They're hand assembled. So that would nice. explain that. That would explain the cost. Then it'd be uh, interesting to see what your opinions are of that versus, say, my your twenty-seven dollar X Ages. Well, three to not, nine. not that, but you know, maybe like a, a you know two to four hundred dollar scope that you know is is pretty standard or whatnot. Maybe, from maybe something from the Vortex line, well, you know? Well, yeah, then, or another, yeah, another Vortex, you know. And again, I'm getting this scope so that I can shoot out to a mile. So I've already done it before with the Steiner military that I have. I just need a little bit more magnification. So, and plus working for the, the firearms industry, you know, it's really cool because you get to meet a lot of cool people and they can point you in the right direction when it comes to 
uh, scopes and rifles mm -hmm. and setups, that kind of stuff. What caliber do you plan to use to shoot out to a mile? Uh, 300 Win Mag. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. I have a video on my channel of uh, of one of my buddies behind my rifle um, making a hit on a uh, Ipsic silhouette target at I think it was like 10 yards farther than a mile. So it's mm. 1,760 yards. So, I mean, you might need to turn the volume all the way up, but you can hear the impact like two seconds after. Uh, Pulls you know, it's, yeah, it's it's like a solid like lag time between him taking the shot <laughs> and hearing the impact. It's really quiet, so you got to listen real close. That's awesome, man. Very cool. Nice. All right. And then AWAG also, he's going to give us kind of the uh, kind of the, the current news update on on the possibility of building an AK or not, if that's cheaper to do these days or versus buying one off the rack. So AWAG, right, I'm glad I'm gonna, you're here because you're, you're, you're the resident that expert that on that. I'm All answer right. that question real quick. Um, no, it is not cheaper to build an AK than it is to uh, buy one as of right now because parts kits, the prices, if you're going from nothing to building an AK, you're probably going to be spending around like two to three thousand dollars with like tools and parts kits and barrels. And even if you can get some, some of these parts kits, you know, yeah. so, so. There, Hey, there's a question from the, uh, the chat already for you from SS pawn, a wag, uh, a SS pawn wants to know why not night force? Well, nice night force is nice and all. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, I just feel that the, the vortex razor HD is a little bit more suited for what kinds of shooting that I'm doing. Um, cause extreme long range now, granted night force has really good glass and I compared the two when I got my hands on both the razor HD and the, um, it was a night force and X or, um, but I was comparing that with now one of the loop old Mark eights and you know, the loop old Mark eight is absurdly light for how big it is. It's, um, that that's a really nice scope. And I do end up getting a tiny, tiny bit of discount, but you know, it's still, uh, the Mark eight is like a $3,700 scope. So it's, you know, but night force they're they're all good scopes. They're all on par with each other. Um, what I'm looking for is tracking and reticle choices. I'm not too much of a fan of some of the reticle choices that, uh, night force just forces onto some of their scopes and the, I know this is like a little stupid thing, but the um, when you turn the turrets, they're 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 kind of mushy. I don't like them. So like if if you're uh, gonna set up a rifle for night vision, like like I'm eventually gonna do with this rifle, is if you're in the middle, completely dark, and you don't know if you're clicking because they're just like mushing over. You know you you can't dial up correctly, and you'll end up missing the shot. So just kind of that, almost like that little fit and finish, and just the just the yeah, quality and the feel and the tactileness of it, and so on. Every, yeah. every manufacturer makes different choices when using uh, reticles, turrets, glass quality, magnification, tube diameter. You know the the works. Yeah, my Vortex Diamondback. It was about a four hundred dollars scope, and I got it for two sixty on sale. And it, I mean, the the turrets are. I wish they maybe clicked a little bit with a little more definition, but I mean, they didn't cheap out on it at all. But I mean, it it's fine for what it is. It's great, but. You know, you can start to tell, you can tell a difference in that glass as you work your way up the price point, the clarity, um, just the quality of, and the fit and finish, the build construction, you know. So, cool. All right, uh, Squib, let's let you go ahead and introduce yourself, get a plug for your channel. Anything you want to say this morning while we're here? Uh, drink lots of coffee. Mm-hmm. That is what we do. And if you want to see some great coffee reviews, head on over to Squib's channel. He's got a lot of good ones. The Squib Load or Squib Lift? Where do you put the coffee reviews? Because I just click and watch. I, I, usually... I put I put the coffee reviews on Squib Load. Squib, Squib Load. Squib okay. Lift is more. Uh, it, it's other. It's other stuff. It's a variety channel too, but it's other stuff. But I wouldn't say they're great coffee reviews. They're just coffee reviews. <laughs> That's always good to get another person's take on something before I buy. Because there's something you detect in the flavor of the coffee. There's a pretty good chance that. Somebody who really enjoys their coffee is probably going to notice that too. So they're good to watch. They're good to watch. All right. Let's see. Okay, moving on. Defense Dad, how's it going this morning? Not bad. How you doing? Pretty good. How's the weather out there in uh, Nebraska? Oh, it's 
about the same where, where you're at in Nebraska. <laughs> about a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got going on? Midnight Range is already out there talking smack out there in the chat. Hey, Midnight, we sent you an invite. Why don't you come join us, buddy? And uh, Midnight, I got some good, got, got some good news for you about your AMD 63, just so you know. So, uh, so Defense Dad, what do you got coming up wait, on the channel, wait, man? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. No, no, don't have Midnight join us. That's too much Travis for one show. He's yeah, he's yeah, probably busy. He's we've probably had making brunch right now. We've so. only had two Travi on the channel at one time. I think I don't think we've ever had three Travi before. So we need to get some other Travi. We need to have an all Travi edition of no, Caliber Corner no, one of these don't. days. The Travi Collective Takeover Edition. No, the, the, the Chamber Server would probably. And then we'll just do nothing but talk reloading the whole time, and then we'll make Night Strike join us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! If I, if I join, I bring the Mike militia with me. Oh, there you go, there you go. There's probably lots of Michaels out there, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's me, yep. there's budget, and there's a couple other people. Oh, geez, heads up, man! Michael, the the Mike Mike's versus the Travi. Yeah, um, defense that. What do you got coming up on your channel, man? What do you got? What's in the works? Give us a little bit of a teaser here. What's what's the plan? Oh, still got a few more of the budget versus beauty uh, videos are going to hit, and uh, probably I got a I got a little. Something new yesterday, might have to review. Ooh, excellent, excellent. Get over there and subscribe to Defense Dad's channel. And you've also, you put a recipe up there too. You're kind of testing the waters with the uh, the recipes, maybe getting ready to, to launch a B channel at some point. Yeah, kind of kicking around doing something like, that. Is, is, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff I do that is, isn't gun related. I wasn't quite sure if everybody went on the same channel or not, but uh, just yeah. picked up some turkey leftovers the other day. I want to clarify something though. Mm -hmm. I don't drink hot tea or sweet tea. It's good old redneck American freeze dried nest tea. Nest tea? No, that's a Nebraska staple right there. That's here. <laughs> if you grew up in Nebraska, you grew up with the can of the freeze dried nest tea. You just take a scoop up and put it in cold water, and that's what you drank, and it was good, right? Yeah. Or you, you in the summertime, in the summertime, like we, had the, we had the sun the tea. What's that? You can make it strong enough. You're like jittering off the walls. You can make it yeah. through. <laughs> Or we do the pictures of sun tea. That's like the only, but like sweet tea in Nebraska, you would take a scoop of the freeze dried tea, you'd put it in a cup with ice, and then you'd add sugar to it. Oh, oh. Uh, no, the, I don't, I that's, don't. that was sweet tea in Nebraska, man. It'll make you barf, man. It's so nasty. No, I don't like, I don't like flavored. I'm not a big fan of flavored or sweet drinks other than like soda or something once in a while. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. All right, moving over. We got a little Rich Y joining us today. Rich, what's going on, man? How's it going? Are you drinking tea right now? You said you're drinking tea right yeah, now? Me, me, yeah, I got a big 24-ounce uh, cup of Earl Grey. Pre present company accepted. Now, Earl Grey is pretty good. I do like that, and that's got a lot of caffeine in it, so that's a good choice. So um, how are things going for you, man? You doing okay? Yeah, not too bad. And I, I just want to say Nice Strike will go to recruit budget, and budget will change his name to Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Budget's middle oh, name is probably hi. Travis. He's a All he's right. a closet he's a closet Travis right yeah. Uh, what is the midnight saying? Travis digs that tea flavored sugar. If it doesn't crunch, he don't drink it. I tell you what, man, I'm I'm a sweet tea convert, but I'm only gonna drink it pretty much when it's hot out, or and I I'm only gonna get it from certain places because I don't make it at home. So there's only certain restaurants I like to pick it up at. But Nebraska does not do sweet tea good. I'll tell you that right now. So um, let's see. So so Rich, you got a show that you do. What is the show called, man? What's what's your program? Well, let's see. Tonight, if Ellis is not having to work late or isn't under the weather, we will have a classic wrestling show on his channel tonight on uh, the Outlaw Halffield at 9 p.m. Eastern. And then tomorrow night on the Unloaded Media channel will be This Week Unloaded, which is on at 8.30 Eastern. And we talk about whatever comes to mind most of the time. You never know what we're going to talk about. We might talk guns. We might talk... Uh, Food. We might talk uh, classic movies, TV shows, whatever. I mean, it, it's just, it truly is a hit or miss show. We don't know what we're going to do. And no, it's not on Tuesday nights at nine o'clock. Yeah. No, all right, man. That's all right. That's all right. We would never go there. We would never want to cork each other. That's something that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, that never happens. <laughs> Uh, so Midnight Range says, Earl Grey, these guys are making sure if the rednecks invade, or the red, the rednecks, the redcoats invade again, they can get in good with them, Travis P11. Well, in my defense, my family fought in the American Revolution on the other side. <laughs> for the British? Yeah, for the British and the Hessians. Oh, man, that's it. I'm booting you out of this lobby right now. You're... <laughs> no, my, mo my mother's side, no, my father's side. There were redcoats in the family, including officers. And then in, in, on my mother's side, they were Hessians. 
That's some crazy stuff, man. That's some crazy stuff. All right. And he's back. It's been a long time since he's been here. But Tony's with us. Tony was actually here for like episode three of Caliber Corner when we covered this topic three years ago. So, Tony, how are things going, man? How you doing? Hey, uh, life is wonderful. Good. Good. What you been what you been up to these days? You get any good hunting in this winter so far? Ah, uh, some. I'm actually I've been sick quite a bit, but hopefully that's all past. I should yeah. be out deer hunting right now, but I'm like, heck with that, it's too cold. See, and over here in Nebraska, it is a well in this part of the state, it has been a weird warm winter. We had sixty five degrees yesterday. I think it was sixty five, man. Defense that quote me if I'm wrong on that, but yeah, um, it was really nice. Like you open the windows. I could have had shorts and a t shirt on. I mean, it was like it was like we get that sometimes like in January for like a week, we'll get this freak like fifty five degrees, sixty degree weather. But it is not. I mean, we had a lot more snow in October, November last year at this time. Right now, it's been like 55 or 60 every day. No humidity. It's beautiful out. It's awesome. Cold in the mornings, but that's pretty much it. So, um, How's the squirrel hunting, Tony? Did you get a chance to go out a couple times? Yeah, I've been out squirrel hunting. Squirrel hunting's good. Good. I'm waiting to go back next week after deer season's over. Yeah. Get those guys out of there, and then you can get back out there and go do your thing. Uh, you got some got some shout outs there, Tony, from the uh, the audience watching. We got Kingpin saying Tony is the man. Midnight Range says, "Wait, Tony." He goes, "How you doing, dude?" So you got some fans out there, Tony. So you need to be here more often. Well, it's you know I'm getting old. And my memory ain't very good, so I never remembered the damn thing. Hey, I can call, man. I got I'm available for wake up calls if you need them. I mean, I'm always up at like five a.m. every morning, so if you need a wake up call, man, we can take care of you. So. <laughs> Usually I'm up and gone by this time of day. Yeah. That's all right, man. It's good to have you back, dude. All right. And last but not least, joining us from the East Coast, but somewhere in the Midwest, we've got Single Shot. Single Shot, how's it going, brother? Hey, bud. How you doing? How's everybody doing today? We're doing okay. I mean, it might be a depressing topic, but we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> when you see these prices, you're going to be like, oh, my God. We all, I think next week's topic is, should we sell the guns, some of the guns, right? <laughs> I, uh, I'm i headed for Egan, Minnesota today. I got to be over there Monday morning and uh, deliver a load of paper. Just coming through the toll gate here on I-80 in Ohio now. So okay. I'm getting over there. Just run through a little bit of light drizzle and... Uh, Mixed with a little bit of snow there. I think all that winter weather must be east of Iowa and north of Iowa because we're not we're not getting anything. It's I mean it's perfect on this side of the country, dude. I'll tell you what, it's miss the winter weather. I miss it, but I'm kind of glad it's not you know not having to deal with it. So, well, you drive safe today. Now you got a channel single shot. What do you got coming up on your channel for content? Ah, I just posted another one, a little fun video there that I did uh, the last time I was home new way to water the lawn and uh in december it's a little short one <laughs> it's a little short one and, uh, and it's a, it's a little bit of fun i put up some 38 special loads there i had to test them anyway for accuracy so oh cool i uh put out a few water jugs and blew them up with a 38 special at 25 yards so it's oh yeah take a look at that one and uh, uh give me a comment or two but other cool. than that, uh, we're not doing too bad. Been busy. I'm uh, thinking we're going to be quite busy right up until after the first of the year, the way things are going, which is good. I'm but, seeing a uh, lot of people out buying stuff, time. man. Stores out here are packed, man. People are buying things, spending money. I mean, maybe the economy is starting to have a little bit of a rebound, regardless of what they say on yeah. TV or the radio. I mean, our, I don't know about you. I mean, out here, like in the afternoon, evenings, people are out shopping. They're they're buying food at restaurants. They're you know getting their things. I mean, I. They said holiday shopping was up a pretty decent chunk this year versus last year. So I think, I don't know what it is. I think more people are home, so they're bored, so they're just buying stuff, you know? I really think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, it's showing it out here because it's seeing a lot more truck traffic, and that means that the economy is definitely doing a lot better than what it was. But uh, the biggest thing now is getting uh, places to park everybody and – I myself, I don't drive at night unless I absolutely have to because mm-hmm. of uh, uh, astigmatism in my eyes, mm-hmm. and I cannot stand all this excess lighting that people insist on using. Uh, oh, yeah. The thing that I have a, a statement to make on about that stuff, you got to run that kind of lighting on the road, in the, on the main road, especially in interstates. Don't drive at night. You're blind. So, anyway, yeah. 
folks be safe. Take care. I'll cool. be riding along listening. There you go. All right, man. So this should be a it'd be an interesting topic because there may still be some hope out there for people looking for a good deal of any rifle of any shape, size, or type. So a uh, quick reminder, today's episode is brought to us by SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Make sure you guys take the Lexington exit. It's out there in central Nebraska, right off Interstate 80. There's a big old sign that says Pawn Shop. Take a right turn, stop in there, say hello to Stan, and SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. SS Pond's a really cool shop, so make sure you stop by and check it out. So let's see who's joining us over on the YouTube side. We got a lot of people out there this morning. We got 27 people watching. That's good. Joining me at 830 on a Saturday morning. What a dedicated group of people or sooner. Right, Calaveras? <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, Scott, uh, Scott P79 out there. Rich White. Rich White is out there. He's with us, too. Black Hat Outdoors. Tacos and French Fries. Squib Lift is out there. Squib Lift is over here. Squib is everywhere. Uh, Midnight Range is joining us. AWAG 1000 is out there over here. Kingpin's over here. Look at all those blue wrenches. Holy cow. Fiend Dog 27 says it's not winter yet. Well, yeah, I mean, technically you're talking off the calendar. I understand that, Fiend Dog, but I'm thinking like temperature wise, snow wise. We we call it yeah, winter when, when snow arrives in Nebraska. Winter. Yeah, in Nebraska, yeah. when the temperature gets below freezing and it's snowing, we just call it winter. We don't even care. I mean, I don't sit there and look at the calendar saying, oh, it's the first day of winter. But no, technically you're right. You're right. Uh, let's see who else is out there. Defense Dad's over there and over here. M. Gabriel's watching right now. Got a pretty good crew joining us this morning. Good to see everybody. Uh, Earl Gaming, PH is out there also. Fiend Dog 27's in the house. SS Pond. Snake Doctor 78. Uh, it's not missing anybody if we get a chance here. Irish Wrist Watchers out there this morning. Justin Grimm, Keith Gregory. Lead Life is watching too this morning. Patriot in the Dark. So a little shout out to everybody chilling. All right, so so let's talk about this. Let's just get right into it. So, Squib, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, Squib, your your most recent AK-47 purchase, it, you had a family member that bought an AK or you got an AK. Can you give us an idea what the price was and approximately what was it that you got? I mean, was it just a normal gun store purchase or did you find it online? Because I want to talk about AK-47s for starters because prices are just are crazy right now. And we'll talk about what you can expect if you go out on the market. Um, Squib, what'd you guys find? So my son wanted an AK. I wanted an AK, wanted an AK, wanted an AK. I said, well, you ain't getting mine. So he went looking online and he said, hey, there's a store down the street. What do you know about it? I said, it's been there for years. I've never gone to it. I mean, we've got three gun stores within walking distance, right? And uh, he said, well, let's go down there. I want to see if they've got an AK. I said, all right, well, if it doesn't work out, uh, you know, just don't be surprised because a lot of places are just sold out. It's not that they don't want your business. It's just they can't get inventory. I said, if not, we can look to order one online and you can do a transfer at my FFL. He's a real good guy. He's got good rates. He said, well, let's go down there. So we went down there and he had two Riley Defense AKs behind the counter. And he said that they can't keep them in stock. Uh, a lot of the guns that they had, uh, they had trouble keeping in stock. They had, they had some ammo too, and uh, it was marked up like everywhere else. And they had a sparse selection, and and that they said they were having trouble getting more. And uh, he said twelve hundred eighty dollars, and I just yeah, that was my reaction. I mean, yeah. the highest I think I ever saw them on on Classic Farms when they carried them, they were seven hundred, seven fifty, and they were the only one you could buy because they're new to the game and they're still kind of proving themselves. The other one that you find is the Pioneer Arms, but we'll check prices here in a little bit. So that seriously was the that was their lowest price. That was their only price. They had two oh. Riley Defense. I don't have the model in front of me, but it's their uh, I believe it's their classic line. It's a full size AK. It's nothing, no folding stock, no mm -hmm. cut down, no fancy you know muzzle device or whatever. It had the the slant uh, compensator yeah, on there. On the it, it did have the side mount there built into the the receiver for putting an optic on. But that was it. It came with one mag from X Tech Tactical, and uh, no sling, no book, no no nothing. Right? That was it. And he goes, "I want it. It's your money, son." He works hard for it, so he he paid it. I it was I it was kind of a proud moment. I watched my son fill, fill out his first forty four seventy three. I was there for it. So uh, for those of you with kids that are too young to buy guns. When they do get to be that age and you, and they want you to come to the gun store with them, you know, to ask your opinion, it's 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 a really cool moment. So uh, we uh, we bought that. We went across the street and uh, we bought some ammo 
and he bought a case and a lock for the case because he wants to be able to transport it. You know, we had it in the cardboard box, obviously. He didn't want that. He wanted his own case. And uh, he's already started uh, accessorizing it. The thing is, though, when he came home, I said, open up one of them ammo cans I got you for Christmas years ago. And he opens it up, and it's pretty much like a mag and a sight tool and a sling. And I'm like, do you see why I was buying you all this stuff all these years? <laughs> when is he going to start his YouTube channel, the uh, mini squib lift channel, the mini lift yeah, channel? Yeah, no, nah, he's not. Nah, the, he, min the mini load channel. <laughs> he would He would be like the rest of these kids. he just uh, play videos of him playing video games, which I don't – why – it's kind of like range hey, videos. I don't get, understand why anybody wants to watch somebody else shoot a gun when they can just here, go shoot a gun themselves. Squib, here's why. Here's why I watch range videos. It's like watching a car review. I want to get somebody's opinion on it. Like, how does it feel? How does it work? You know, does it run? Is there any weird characteristics about it? Is there anything inherent about it that I should think about before I spend my money on it? Because I can't really get a chance to shoot it necessarily before I buy it. So if I watch somebody else shoot it, I'm going to get an idea. I know it's somebody else's opinion to take, but I'll watch many, many videos on a gun before I decide to buy it. And, you know, I, I do it just to kind of get an idea about what I'm getting myself into. Like, is there anything about it that annoys people when they shoot it? Because there's a good chance that that's going to bug me, too. So that's why I watch range videos. It's like, what's the trigger like? Does it function? Know. Does it, you know. These kids I'm will like, play video games on one screen and watch a YouTube video of somebody else who played a bit that video game on the other screen and i don't get that and uh, okay. I, i've talked I to kids about that and, and, you it, know when we were kids i hated waiting to play and so you know when you're waiting for your buddy to die so you could jump in and take over and play the you know player two or whatever i hated that i asked him about that I, i'll ask kids like why do you guys watch those videos and the reply is well because i want to you know i want to learn about a certain section to get through it a lot of it's gonna be like how to get through a section video but a lot of it's like well, i want to see if there's any power-ups or i want to see if there's any like shortcuts or anything like that and they're just, it's just a form of entertainment. It's like watching a competitive sport. You got esports now that people pay to watch, that people compete on. You've got teams, millions of dollars. Esports is like a $1 billion industry now worldwide. And I mean, it's insane, man. You got teams of people that play on servers against each other. It's like, it's like, it's like a sports team, basically, but they're playing video games. They're playing Call of Duty. So uh, it's just, it's a different take on what kids have grown up. Hey, they've been force fed so technology and they've been force fed video games in the market. You're 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 reaping what's been sown, buddy. I mean, you're seeing the results of it right now. Well, if my kids, if my kids ever did their own YouTube channel, it wouldn't be guns, even though they like guns and stuff like that. No, they would probably be like all these other and just here. I'm going to record myself playing video games and get a million views. I you that's Travis, you can that's how they, it they're in the face. I just don't get it. They got personalities. They interact with their viewers. They 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 get the newest games that kids haven't had a chance to play yet. They got time yeah. to dedicate to playing the games. They do. They show off little features. There's grown men that have and grown women that have channels on on Twitch and channels on YouTube. I mean, these are talking people in their 30s and 40s that play video games and play through sections of it. Stuff. I mean, look at Kevin the Tack Daddy. He does Call of Duty every single day. He does Warzone live broadcast. So, okay, Defense Dad, what do you want to say? So I just I, and I got to give you a little bit of crap, Squib, because you have a gun related channel and you're saying you don't get why people watch gun related. <laughs> no, I, no range videos. It's like watching somebody drive a car or something else like that. You can mm -hmm. do this yourself. Hey, I'm going to take this gun that you want to buy and I'm going to stand six feet away from a 36 inch gong and do a mag dump. Look at me. I'm an operator. Well, on not everybody's like that. I oh, shoot paper I, and I, I made your groups. Like you know. yeah, I, just, I, just, I, just, I had to give them a hard time about it. No, no. <laughs> I, I got to stand with Squib on this one because watching somebody shoot a gun is more boring than watching you know, people. Oh, I'm not watching somebody like, shoot a gun. I'm getting their take on 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 the experience. Like what what is that? What is it like to shoot that gun? Before I go out and drop seven hundred dollars on it, is it a piece of crap? Is it accurate? It, how's how's the ergonomics? How does it feel? Do, do There's you, a lot of channels that I like to watch, like Mac, where they're going to do a nice thorough test on it, going to give me an idea of what I'm getting myself into. Do you so, see when Hickok goes out there and he shoots? He shoots mm -hmm. a two liter. I think we're gonna smoke a little pot here. Shoots a a, a, a ceramic pot. And, and you know what? Gone. It sells. It that sells. He's got five million subs, three million subs. Years. And I'm gonna shoot. And it's like, hey, I'm, I'm ready to this video for a year or two before I decided to do a good look for other channels. I watched every nothing fancy video when they first came out because that's what pulled me into. It's like being entertained, you know. Now, when somebody does something like when Sarge did that hundred yard shot with a handgun, I'm like, okay, I'll watch that. That's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Like, dang, that's difficult to do. But it's just, I don't know. I'd look, man. I'm not saying that if somebody does range videos, they're bad or anything. It just, it puts me to sleep. I literally walk out of the room and come back 
to yeah. win after after they're done at the range, and then they talk about their experience. Now, Obnoxious did uh, uh, one where he something was was up with the audio or something. So what he did was he did a voiceover while he mm -hmm. was shooting. And I yeah. thought that was the best of both worlds because you could see him. He said where he you know each range he was going to move back, and this is what he was shooting at, and this is the ammo mm -hmm. he's shooting. And now you well, you're watching him shoot, but he's talking about his experience. And I'm like, this is what I'm looking for. I don't want to see, I don't want to hear bang, 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 bang for three and a half minutes. And then yeah. the person talks about it. So okay. have you, yeah. have you ever seen uh, honest outlaw reviews? Yeah, His okay. channel, he does that the whole time he's talking while he's shooting. And there's a few parts where he's going to shoot some targets and then talk a little bit more while he's shooting. He talks about the design and stops and interacts with the camera. I think you might like a different type of range video possibly. Yeah, um, maybe but, but the whole thing is, I don't think that uh, I don't think my kids want to do uh, YouTube stuff on guns. But I will say this, though, mm -hmm. once again, for those of you who have kids that are too young to buy their own guns or maybe they're too young that you're going to get them a gun as a gift. Mm -hmm. Once you do start getting them guns as gifts, birthday, Christmas, uh, you know, getting A's on the report card, whatever the reason is, or once they do get old enough, they start buying their own guns. If you review guns and you're running out of material, you can just grab one of your kids' guns and review them. This is true. This is true. And I may or may not already have done that. <laughs> and the other thing that's nice about Honest Outlaw is there are videos of his where he's doing certain guns where he'll have his wife shoot it too and get her opinion on it. Yeah. And his cinema, his filming and camera quality is just as top notch. Now, granted, he's shooting steel targets the whole time, so you're not getting like the precision take on the gun's accuracy, but he's hitting stuff at like 75 or 100 yards in his videos i mean like and i make a lot of range videos and i'm kind of defending my own channel because i make videos that are relatively short my range videos are seven or eight minutes long i cut out the dead time between shots i'm not actually shooting that fast in real life i'm cutting out the two to three minutes of me refocusing on my target before i pull the trigger um you know i'm i'm, I'm cutting out the dead time of me moving back to my target no so, i mean i man, i do this here's here's my take on it if i'm gonna go ahead and shoot the gun and spend the money on ammo and play around i'm just gonna go ahead and put it on camera people want to watch it great if they don't want to that's their choice you know so, just, when you're on the, when that you're fast with the gun what's that nice the, strike j j j just just own up to being that fast with the firearm oh you yeah know? there you go yeah when <laughs> no, you you're, can see when the you're, trees in the background you can see you're, you're also the destroyer of tauruses as far as we know too tari tari not tauruses tari right. yes yes when you're doing the review on on the the site and clean on your countertop and you're talking about this and talking about that you're showing what comes with the gun or yeah, I'll do a about top review. Or, yeah. and then yeah. afterward at the range you're talking about anything or when you're like you know uh either at the range or back to the countertop and you're you're talking about your experience stuff that to me is a lot more interesting than just watching you do something that I can do myself. Yeah, and I think for my videos, instead of doing the separate range video and the tabletop review, I'm going to combine both of them together into one like I was doing, just like talking about the shooting footage and showing my targets while I'm talking about the gun while it's sitting on the... And the only reason why I'd film it indoors instead of doing it out at the range like Honest Outlaw is the wind is always horrible when I'm trying to film outside. Yeah. I know I could use the external mic with the dead cat, but sometimes we got 25, 30 mile an hour winds. It's just not pleasant to stand out there and talk to a camera. You know, your camera's trying to flip over and stuff the whole time so anyway right. let's but um, I, I found the, the countertop and and the cleaning videos more useful to me if yeah, somebody else yeah. is entertained by or or gets something out of the range it's not it's not a thing about you per se travis oh it no just, no no i understand but I, I, i've done a lot of videos right i shoot at a paper target walk back shoot walk back shoot shoot some steel and for me it was just well i'm at the range i'm just going to put it on camera that was pretty much my idea behind it it wasn't really well i'm trying to do this specific type of video or that it's like well let's just let everybody know i do shoot better though when the camera's not turned on i can say that right now so <laughs> yeah right Squib, if you're interested i did an oven top review of a styre l9a2 so if you're interested check that out on my channel uh okay don't even know what that is but okay it's like a tabletop review except uh, it's on top of an it, oven. he's copying your style squib you, you do everything from the glass top oven uh, it's about the only open space in the house. See, that's uh, why I use my countertop in the kitchen is see, because it I, had the best lighting. So, if if you'd like to do a styre straight pull, that would be interesting to see. There you go. There you go. All right. So, so regardless, let's... so I mean, you know, the price was <laughs> was really high. Yes. And yes. it was it was difficult to, but you know, like I said, he he's already got uh, accessories for it. He's already got mags. He's already got all kinds of things, and he's got more stuff coming this Christmas to go with it. Uh, but the 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 immediate shock after the high price for an AK was that 
ammo, you know, if the store across the street that was selling ammo, uh, limit three per customer. So ammo is a bit scarce too. So even if you can afford or you're willing to accept those higher prices, just don't be surprised when you go to shoot it and you know, you're either limited on how much, how much lead you can throw down range because of your budget or just because of availability. Yeah. Uh, I didn't price anything else. I did talk to somebody at the range uh, a couple weeks ago and he bought an AR 15, uh, just a 16 inch barrel, uh, uh, no collapsible butt stock. I can't remember what brand, uh, but uh, he picked up one for seven hundred fifty dollars a month ago. So maybe there are still some some fair prices. Oh yeah, if there. you don't mind buying your lower and sourcing your upper from say Radical Farms or Bear Creek and get your lower from PSA, you can get an AR for six hundred uh, pretty much any day. I mean, you can get three hundred dollar uppers, and you still. Now we're not talking, not not including optics. We're not including magazines. We're not talking about any other, you know, little tactical doodads you might put on the rifle itself. Um, what's interesting is is Black Rain Ordnance makes a line of just entry level M4s for shields for the sporting goods store here, and they were selling them for six ninety nine, and they were just selling like hotcakes because they were they were cheaper than the Rugers. And Black Rain Ordnance is a pretty expensive company. They're up there with like Daniel Defense, you know, fifteen hundred dollar ARs all day. That's the norm for Black Rain Ordnance. And they do make this entry level budget line where they're just just to get them out there to meet demand. And they're just, in fact, when you go to the AR case at the Shields here in Lincoln, everything sold out. They even sold they sold the Scar heavies. They sold everything out of the case. They have like I don't defense that when I was there, they had like two ARs in the case, and that was it. It was completely yeah, empty. That's about it. And like, yeah. I mean, people bought the CMMG Banshees. They bought the five sevens. They bought all the all the Springfield Armory uh, Saints and Victors and all that stuff. All that stuff's gone. Well, so it I, sounds, it and they usually pretty... have what close to a hundred between there's three walls behind cages there. Yeah, there's at least a hundred AR-15s in the in those three cases. Yeah, if not more. It sounds pretty good though that they've got that entry level one mm-hmm. to to meet demand. I mean, typically, I only recommend an entry level for somebody who has absolutely no experience and they they're going in blind. They want this, but they don't really know what they want. It, it's, it's like spec. You it's... It, yeah, you can tear it apart and accessorize yeah. it later. But if you know what you want and then you get an entry level, I'm like, why? But hey, man, it's your money. Uh, the thing about Riley Defense, though, I will say every part on that gun, I got in contact with them and I talked to them. Every part on that gun is made in America. They're not using any mill yeah. or imported parts. So $1,280 for a 100% American made gun. They is, they bought okay so they bought know, out um what's the what's the company that they bought they were in Florida NEA bought one had one of their guns before IO IO but it's in, not it's not yeah like it's that. complete like they just bought the the machinery probably the workforce but they I think it's I think it's it's either they're yeah, in Charlotte Riley's in Charlotte North Carolina but yeah I w- I've been in contact with them a few times uh we had an issue with the uh, with the uh, compensator on the end, you can't fit a bayonet on that compensator. I said, no, it should fit. And I'm like, no, I, I, I even took the, uh, the compensator off of my, uh, 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 Wasser and put it on there and still couldn't get. And I said, it's not the compensator, it's the lug. And, uh, they said, well, if you want, you can send it in. It's got a two year warranty. We can do that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I can't remember what I ended up doing. I ended up doing something. They said, uh, try try filing this or filing that. I can't remember what I did, but it, eventually we got the, the bayonet to fit on there because I tried a Romanian and East German bayonet, and I tried two different uh, compensators, slant brakes, and we had some problems. And I'm not knocking the quality either. I mean, yeah. we ran that gun. We didn't even oil it right out of the box and 150 rounds of ammo through it and – no, no big deal. It the new yeah. magazines for it were uh, they took a couple, a couple of uses to kind of break in where they fit. Mm-hmm. Everything fit really tight, but uh, the, the, just the fact that it's all American made uh, for an AK, and and that's not to say that the imported AKs are bad. They're not. I mean, the, over there, that's where they were making them, right? They know how to make them. But the the argument I've heard about, oh, it's so expensive to make an AK in America. If you mass produce them, I would say no. If you're making them a little at a time or hand making them, sure, obviously. But to to reproduce something that that you already know, you know these parts work. You can reverse engineer anything if they've already done all the R and D and worked out the yeah. bugs. And yeah. what's the big deal? But it's just good to see an American company making them. And the best part is now that they're on their Gen twos, they did cast originally cast their parts. Now they're forged trunnions. They're forged yes. whatever. Yes. Forged everything is forged that possibly can be. 
because I think they they even put that in the name of it or something. Because I that I was, was following a- Rally Defense when they were first on AK forty seven Operator Union's channel because he he had he bought one of their Gen ones and then got a Gen two and has put it through hell and back and I think it's held up pretty good. I don't think it's had like excessive trunnion wear, or excess excessive piston wear, bolt wear, or anything like that. So. Yeah, everything is basically forged on it. So if that's where we got to start versus the uh, Century Arms. Um, what was that? The Raz 47? Rad, the Raz 47 yeah. where they had the cast trunnions originally. Or, and then they did a heat-treated trunnion or whatever. And yeah. they had kind of a Gen 2 Raz 47. And then they had and, their their forged version also. But And that was my concern, Travis. Is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was texting I was texting different uh, uh, Gun Channel's people going, got any experience with Riley? You know, we're right there, and he's he's wanting to buy it. And I'm like, hold on, let me let me get a response back. And there, and I got two two responses back saying, no, they're good, you're good, because I was kind of concerned that they were were cast and not forged. And then when I contacted Riley Defense after effect, they're like, no, they're they're forged. So you so. got you got the Rack 47 Classic with just the wood furniture on it and kind of the Bakelite uh, pistol grip on it and stuff. Yeah, and it says Bakelite, but I think it's it's just plastic right. made plastic. to look like Bakelite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we got the black. I'm looking at it right now. Black oxide finish, uh, mil, mil spec stamped receiver, 4150 barrel. Uh, let's see, 14 and one left hand thread, forged trunnion bolt and carrier, machine scope mount, side rail, front and rear sight, bayonet lug, extended magazine release, uh, cleaning rod, which does include a cleaning rod because PSA doesn't include it doesn't include cleaning rods. Now, from the YouTube side, I think it was Scott P79 said, you know, you got the GF3s, the PSA GF3s are 750, 800, I think maybe 850. When you can catch them, and I've I've had plenty of opportunities to buy a GF3, the GF4s, I think those are the ones with the FN barrels. Those have been good luck getting one. I mean, if you can catch one, you know it's like the magical unicorn. But the GF3s do pop up in stock from site from time to time. If you can get one of those, I'd say go that route. You know, with the Riley Defense, I wouldn't be afraid to buy a Riley Defense if you you know you've got the warranty. Um, you know, I've seen AK47 Operators Union put thousands of rounds through his, and he just got an off the rack production one, and he you know, address concerns that he had for the first time he got. And I think he even had to send it back in for repairs, but I think they got it figured out by this point. So, all right. So yeah, the Riley defense, there's another one. I can't remember what it is. There's like a, it's not black aces, but there's another company that that classic was selling that I think might've been the former IO factory and they, but they, you know, it's all forged products and stuff, but yeah, I mean, Riley fence has a pretty, has a pretty respectable lineup and so on. So, so a wag, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Are you ready? Hey, Freddie. So a person thinks that they're going to build their own AK or have one built for them. What are we looking at for a barreled receiver? What are we, what's, what's it going to cost your average person? Let's say you've got some machining skills. Let's say you've got the tools already. What's it going to cost you, cost you to build your own AK 47 and is it worth it? Or should you just drop the thousand or drop the $1,200 on a Wasser? All right. So here I'm going to, I'm going to try and walk you through the steps of building your first AK. Um, so if you already have like a milling machine and a lathe, you're already 20 steps ahead of the next guy. Um, I highly suggest you get a mill and a lathe. Do not get a drill press if you want a good result. Um, you know, with with a AK, it's much more labor intensive than building an AR, whereas AR is you just kind of like slap together like Legos, whereas you're actually doing machining in mm-hmm. while building an AK. So uh, we'll go on gun broker. And yeah, look- I'm looking, I'm like, I'm just looking at a Wasser right now. They're starting bids are 850 for one, but I wasn't really looking at barreled receivers. No, well, that's the thing is, is you're a barreled receiver for an AK is virtually impossible to find as it sits. Um, so if you want something, you're going to have to build it from a parts kit that's been demilled via ATF standards, or if the company is like, is, um, you know, does that work for you? They take all the, the, uh, cut up parts off of it and they just sell you the parts themselves. Barreled receivers over on gun broker. If you want to go with a century arms, Raz 47, you know, barreled receiver, which I would not recommend because of, you know, cast issues. Yeah, so- Those are three seventy nine. but once you start to step up to like an AKM or uh century arms, USA, AKM, $800 is what we're looking at for just parts kit, $600 for Romanian parts kit, but you obviously don't have the so the lower receiver basically, or just the receiver in general. Yeah. Obviously you need to, um, you know, you need a parts kit. So something that is, if you want something genuine, uh, Romanians are probably the cheapest. 
Um, yeah, I was just looking at those. Yeah, um, I mean, you can get all kinds of remaining kits for about the same price as you can probably pick up a uh, like a VSKA or something like that. Um, you know, in the street price. You know, if you want to go something kind of obscure like a Bulgarian Krinkov and you have your a, uh, ATF paperwork and you want to build one of these, you're looking at uh, close to $3,000 for a buy now price. That's just for the parts kit. You need the receiver, you need um, you need new rivets and you need headspace gauges because these guns need to be headspace properly in order for them to function. Much like every other firearm. Yeah. So, I mean, if a person, if your average Joe just wants an AK-47, just, you know, bite the bullet and just pick up, go maybe, go get yourself a Riley defense if you can pick one up. Uh, maybe, maybe take $900 to a gun show and see if you can't negotiate on a loss or 800 Take cash to a gun show. You never know. There's a good chance that there might be just, somebody might have a stack of them sitting around. You might be able to negotiate on one or maybe trade in and pay some cash and, and if try to get a good gun deal on shows one. in your state. We do. We do. <laughs> Uh, Nebraska does, but I don't. I mean, I'm just Nebraska and Arizona so. seem to be the only two places having them right now. Yeah, well, I don't know what's coming up for ours, but that they, they've been. I mean, defense said we've been we've been having gun shows, right? So uh, kind of two or three. I don't think they've shut them down yet statewide, right? Well, some have, some haven't. Like the one that's supposed to be coming up in January here in Lincoln's canceled. No, oh, smaller yeah. town. The smaller town ones are still getting away with it because mm-hmm. I don't think expected much turn out, but. The bigger ones have all been canceled or at least at least postponed. So you can get bare bones parts kits for definitely relatively cheaper, but you're still going to need a barrel. You're going to need a receiver. You're going to need, uh, you know, you all- know, unless you got the parts sitting around, just I wouldn't even bother. You know, it's not yeah, even worth it at this point. Lot. If you just want to shoot or just don't think you're going to just put one together, and no, I'll just slap it together like an AR. Luckily, and hopefully, arms, yeah. Luckily, Arms of America actually does incorporate. If you want to get one of these. Uh, bare bones kits you can incorporate uh, you know stock set like it is here you can incorporate the rivets you can incorporate piece it together and okay yeah so you can you can get all the things that you need per se for Mm -hmm. the the kit and then on top of that your receivers are probably another 100 bucks 120 depending on what kind of uh, AK you go for now if you're actually building an AK 47 which is a milled receiver AK um the milled receivers alone are like six hundred dollars because you're taking a block of aluminum you're setting that in a cnc machine and it's having to run through this program on this hardened Mm -hmm. steel so it's very labor intensive for the machine and that's why they cost so much here's like so i hate to go ahead rich yeah i was gonna say on arms of america are they still uh offering the nitrite yugo barrels over there, or they did they uh, do it? Here let's find out. Uh, you know, it costs it costs so much because you're um, an individual consumer buying one individual part. Mass producing that on a CNC don't cost nothing. Other than just the wear and tear in the machine itself, and the machines, dude, are you run coolant on the right? it's carbide parts, it carbide mills, it's it's you run coolant. I mean, if you have a failure and it, and the thing crashes, yeah, that's that's not cheap. But it's not like one end mill per one receiver. I, that's, they, I mean, don't get me wrong. They've got markup. They've got liability. You know, they've got to pay. They, they pay a lot of advertising stuff. Advertising mean, and you know, web yeah, space. There's a, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot. But, but from from a production standpoint, no. The if you knew what it cost to make it versus what you paid, you'd want to throw up. But the thing is, if they didn't sell it for that, they wouldn't want to have any incentive to be in business. Yeah. Uh, just a wag while you look that up real quick, I just want to mention, so if you do want to get yourself, uh, an AK 47, just to let you know, they've got the century arms Visca for eight 99. It's their special edition. That's the cheapest AK 47 style rifle. You can get over in classic farms. If you want something in seven sixty two by 39 Atlantic is that Fire in stock arms, right now. Yes, it is eight ninety nine. Oh, okay. okay. The Visca, which is an American made. I'm not sure exactly what the, what the patterning is based off of. It's got a circle 10 AK stock, which is good. Uh, bird bird cage break 130 round mag for 900 they got the pioneer arms which is okay they're manufactured in poland not at the radon factory but in the city of radon poland i think it's radon is how you pronounce it they're imported by james river armory and then they're 922r compliant those are 799 and they are in stock over at atlantic firearms if i was going to get one that would be the way that i would go that does have the original polish manufacturer barrel with it 
Um, and I do like James River Armory. I know a couple people have had bad experiences with them, but I've got a James River Armory edition AMD 63 that I bought at Classic Firearms three years ago for $450, and that thing has been fantastic. You got to so, be careful with those Pioneer Arms uh, rifles. Okay, why is that? They're hit or miss, basically. Um, Scott, PC Nights, 9 o'clock. Earlier, too, in <laughs> YouTube chat, that they're not always the best rifle in the world now is this a recent purchase or is this one three or four years old because the pioneer arms earlier had a lot of issues before yeah. james river stepped up and imported them yeah historically they have not been the best rifle okay there. so if you want to you want to maybe go riley defense get something you know based here in the u.s yeah. if you're going to do anything squibs yeah. that might have been a good purchase now, on your part so with yeah. that with that though uh rich do you know if the pioneer arms rifle has a warranty and how long it is I couldn't tell you. I think it was one year is what I just, I was just over there looking at it. Atlantic Firearms has them. uh, My recommendation is, even though there's an ammo shortage, if you get an AK, take it out to the range and run it. Run it, run it as much as you can or run as many varieties of ammo or the crappiest steel case ammo through it or what have you, just to make sure it runs. Because if that warranty runs out, then you're going to have to pay a gunsmith. Whereas if, as long as that thing's under warranty, you can send it back. And they'll they'll take care of it, hopefully, and send it back to you. And you might go, well, now I'm without my gun. Well, that's great. But if the thing won't feed or it has other mm-hmm. issues, you want to you wanna take care of that before the warranty runs out. So that might be a little bit of a hurdle with, with ammunition the way it is. But, yeah, it's, it's, you know, spend a little or spend a lot now, spend a lot more later. So it's a one-year warranty. And Calaveras, good news, you can get that as a California legal model for an extra $35. So for eight thirty five minus your shipping and your FFL fees and all the other stuff you got to pay, that you know that's that's an option. Uh, you know now again, I would recommend somebody just go through PSA and try to get a GF three. But if you just can't seem to get into the website when they get them for sale, or you know you get the notification and five minutes later they're they're sold out. Um, you know that I I'd still push for the PSA just because I like PSA's customer service. It's been good for me for the most part. You know if you don't mind waiting, you know a week or two to get a call back, they at least address concerns and they do go through for you and i don't know much about pioneer arms but so 799 i mean that's you know if you get the vsk the visca over there a classic you know that one was 900 um or if you can get one of those riley defense like you mentioned that might be the way to go too and you're getting 100 percent american made ak-47 which some people don't want or think it's awful or whatever but that's gonna be reality eventually as imports dry up and Washer prices keep going up and stuff. That's going to be what you're looking at because of you know importation and laws and so on. So 922R, you've got what is it? Uh, Twelve parts. Yeah, they've got a, typically the stock and and on what I'm seeing, like my on my James River Armory one, it was the pistol grip, the stock, the barrel on mine, and yep. then the magazine and the yep. handguard. Those all counted as the compliant parts that it would needed. You had to have so many parts out of so many that were American made on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> three parts if they're american made you got the body the spring and the follower all kind of three separate parts if i remember right correct yes magazine so i got a hold of century arms and i asked them hey how many parts on my washer are 922 are how many are made in america and they had one more part on the gun than what was needed by law but as soon as you take that magazine off you're you're you know at the bare minimum it's mm. because they counted the mag as one part, yeah. but yeah, it was the yeah. barrel. It was a, each component of the trigger mechanism. And et cetera, I'm not going to say it's ever going to be a big deal, but if you would start selling a bunch of these and you were modifying them or something, I mean, I think once they get here, can't you do whatever you want to them? Once they're officially sold to you, can't you put, say, a, a Russian pistol grip on it if you wanted to? Or is that supposed to be a no-no under 922R? Because I thought once it was sold, right. after it gets to you, you can do whatever you want to it. Yeah, I did re- when I was doing my... Uh... One research project when I was back in school in the mid twenty teens, I was doing one on uh, gun control and everything. And there has, at that point in time, and I don't think anybody has been at this point, a, a citizen who changed out parts on their rifle or, say, their shotgun or what have you, that's been tried, Reported. convicted for a nine twenty two R violation on their personally owned weapon. As far as I could tell, the only time that they actually look at that stuff is when they're actually importing them. Once they're in the country, they pretty much, you can do what you want with it. Yeah, I think you're going to be okay at that point. Because I had a, uh, God, what was it? A Zastava, uh, it was the 308 AK pattern rifle. I can't remember, it's the M77 or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But on that one, it had a few 
parts on it that I immediately changed out. It had the butt, it had the thumb hole stock on it. I put Magpul stuff on it and you know changed it up a little bit. But it wasn't a big deal. But again, the reality is, oh, AWAG coming back to you now. Did you look up what you wanted to look up or find the information that you needed? Or are we pretty much good to go on the topic of AKs? I mean, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, long story short is mm -hmm. if you want to build one, just like make sure you have the, the finances set aside that you can actually build something that you want, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, if you're on a budget, you just don't bother. Yeah. So let's move on to the next possible budget option, um, SKS rifles. Let's see, $800. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Air 15. <laughs> Dude, you've got to be kidding me. No, no, no. SKS rifles over in Gunbroker, and people are bidding on them. Uh, $950, buy it now. A Zostava Yugo what? N59, $800, buy it now. A Narenko Bubba Fied, $1776, what an appropriate price. Uh, like new inbox, all matching Narinko. Buy now eight seventy five. A Chinese oh, you know SKS. Paid, do you know what I paid for my first SKS? Seventy five dollars and a probably seventy nine bag of Cheetos. Seventy nine dollars. Yep. Here's a brand new unfired. So if you got an SKS or several, I would never encourage you to sell your guns. But man, if you can get eight hundred fifty dollars for one, or got at this price, you can practically trade one for a pickup truck. My God. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, so eight hundred dollars for a Zostava, and that's that's the uh, let me let me go to the lowest prices because I do price low to high, and then I go click on buy it now. So entry level lowest price you're gonna get on a Zostava Yugo M fifty nine, buy it now eight hundred dollars. That's it, mic drop. I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I don't even know if okay, it's you might get better prices at local gun shows on SKSs. Defense, did we see did we see some at? The show that we went to, like maybe six, five hundred or six hundred or something like that. I mean, uh, there were plenty of SKSs that were there. I mean, the ones I glanced at weren't anything crazy uh, for I price, unless they were Russian. Yeah, I didn't look too much at the SKSs. I was looking at more at other stuff. Yeah. yeah. At, at, that, you, at this point, with the price, why not just get a mini thirty? That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well because I mean you're going to be getting the same kind of you know you're going to have that California compliancy right. Uh, Caliver, so your mini thirties California compliant. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. That's I think the mini, the mini thirty was. I think it was made so it could be compliant in California. The mini fourteen that was kind of the idea behind it. it was kind of a fifty state legal, you know, five five six option for the fourteen, and then seven sixty two by thirty nine for the thirty. Yeah, that's right. You know, I <clears throat> I've seen plenty of the mini fourteens around. You know, a lot of them are just you know. The Woodstock, you know, a five round magazine, whatever type of setup. The Mini 30, I haven't, can't say I've seen a whole lot of them around. Yeah. Uh, maybe they just, I haven't been looking in the right shops or something, but, you know, uh, I don't know a ton of people out here that shoot, you know, 762 by 39. Yeah. Now, the other budget price alternative, and I'll just throw this out there, and this is, you know, maybe the alternative to the AK or the SKS, if that's out of your budget, and, and this is kind of the FUD approach. Get a Ruger Ranch chambered in 762 by 39 for $400. Get yourself a bunch of MIDI 30 mags and shoot it all day and have fun with it. I've got one. It's got a cold hammer forged barrel. It's threaded, 16-inch barrel, uh, adjustable trigger. I mean, it's not semi-auto, but, man, that thing is just so much fun. You can shoot it all day. I mean, the thing is just awesome. So that's an option if you want to get into – and I'm not, I'm not switching over to bolt actions just yet, but you want to get into 762 by 39 and maybe you don't have the $800 for an SKS or you live in a state that's got regulations – that Ruger Ranch, man, I would trust that thing all day. I wish it had iron sights and it doesn't. Or get yourself a CZ 527 for 650. Yep. That's chambered in 762 by 39. That thing will hold its resale value. That's got you got old world craftsmanship and bluing going on. You've got a nice hardwood stock with it. It's got a two stage trigger. Um, I get a 527. I kind of wish I would have bought a 527, but at that point, when I, what I was looking at the price difference was almost three hundred dollars when I bought my Ruger Ranch. Plus, I like the availability of the mini 30 mags. I can buy them at a lot of the gun stores here in town. So you got five, I think, 10 and 20 round options. But, I mean, it's just a great rifle. I mean, I love it. It's yeah. held up well. I've shot the hell out of it. Yeah. Yeah, there's one um, problem with uh, Squibb's uh, idea there. The mini 30s are going for at a minimum of 900 right now over on gun broker okay minimum of 900 and an sks is going for 800 let me think 
<laughs> that's a hundred dollars. Who cares? Well, I mean, the mini 14s are a little bit cheaper, aren't the mini 14s more like 650 or seven? Yeah, but the mini so, 30 would be 762 by 39 yeah, or 300 yeah. blackout. So if you're looking yeah. for the same caliber, you know, just saying for a hundred extra dollars, duh. Yeah, well, in my experience, the SKS doesn't jam as much as the mini 30. The SKS is a piece of garbage. It's like a, it's like the Nine hundred dollar piece of garbage. Nine hundred dollar piece of garbage. It is. It's <laughs> junk. I'd my use it as a as a prop really rod. That's about it. I haven't had a single issue with my SKS. You just had a lemon. Three lemons in a row. Yeah. I never had problems with SK. Well, okay, the Bubba Fied one junk, that I shot had some issues, junk, but well, okay, junk, no, hold on. Junk. The ones that I shot were Russian. Never mind that. <laughs> they were Tula or Ismesh or whatever. Ismek. With it, so I don't know. Yeah. All right, so we've exhausted the topic of the AK-47. We've given up on the SKS. Let's move on to the AR-15. So if you're looking for an AR-15, in my opinion, the best thing you could do, and you know, you're, 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 you want to get something as low as possible, you can get a complete lower from PSA for $200. Granted, you got to pay, what, 20 bucks for shipping and your FFL transfer fee. You're probably looking at $250. And then you can get yourself an upper from a lot of different companies. Radical Farms makes uppers. Arrow precision, you can get an arrow upper with a bolt carrier group for around 400 I think. Uh, if you just want a basic M4 style or just a basic 16-inch. Um, the Bear Creek uppers, I think they start at what? Defense Dad, $300. Is that right? Is that what it is for the five? Are they less than 300 for for a 5.56 or 7? No, their know? rent went up again. They're starting in the low, They're down the, low okay. to threes. So you could get yourself the $400 upper if you just want a 5.56, not counting your optics and sights and magazines and all those goodies. You could get yourself an upper for $400, get yourself a lower for $250. $650, you've got yourself an AR-15 basically out the door. The entry-level price on a complete PSA AR-15, I want to say, is $699 for their basic M4 without a rear sight. Uh, if you want to go up from there, then you go seven dollars $800. Now, are you finding that uh, lowers, whether they're stripped or complete, are more available than complete rifles? Oh, I'm no? not having any trouble. Like, I, I go over to gun dot deals and I typed in, I type in Anderson strip lower and they're $47 and 99 cents for a lower, a parts kit. If you want like a Magpul complete parts kit with an EPT trigger, say from PSA, you're looking at 119. So if you can get that strip lower locally for 50 bucks and then get your parts kit for 119 for about 170, 180, you can have your own lower. Um, now me, I'm not going to comment on whether or not to purchase anything, but I am looking into the 80% lower option. And I know you're talking regulation and this and that, right? But the the 80% lowers are anywhere between 50 to 70. And then the jig is the expensive part. The jigs that we may or may not have purchased are very expensive, but you can machine many lowers from them. And so that's why we are looking at the option of getting um, a jig, or maybe we bought one. I don't know. For, so uh, for an 80% that- lower. Mm-hmm. Do you do you ever see any used jigs on the market? You know, AWAG was talking about the expense of the tooling to make an AK. Unless you're going to make a bunch of them, it really isn't practical to spend the money on it. With with that, you know, what if somebody bought a jig, made one mm-hmm. or two eighty percent, and then you know threw it on what Craigslist or eBay or something for just to you know? Well, okay, so the one that I that I'm looking at, all right. Uh, it is, you get, you get the router, the handheld router that's designed for that. I mean, it's made, it's the one they feature in the videos on the website that I went to. The jig is 300. They have the router, the jig and a 80% lower all delivered out the door for 549. Now you're getting a jig that is made out of machined aluminum and steel. It's not a polymer jig. It's meant to be used and reused. It's got bearings in it. I mean, it's a very high quality jig. And so for you know the three hundred dollar cost of the jig and seventy dollars for the entry level, you know for the for the price of the the, the lower, the eighty percent lower, you can machine your your lower. And the place that that we may or may not have bought eighty percent lowers from, I think it's called AMT, and they're in stock all the time. If you go to eighty percent lowers dot com, they've got like a four week wait period on eighty percent lowers. But AMT ships the same day or two day within forty eight hours they ship because all they do is make lowers all day. Um, the jig that we're looking at is designed to do. You can do nine millimeter or you can do um um, lr308 or you can also do 556 so it's designed to fit any of whatever you want to machine it out for it's got the templates the aluminum templates that you route around and machine out now you can do it with a uh, a press if you want to or you can put it in a vise grip and you can just basically carve it out in 30 minutes so awag we've talked about that before and you were saying that you know it's very tricky this one has got a router that's designed to not have a speed that's going to exceed, you know, so you don't turn your aluminum into putty 
when you're machining it out. So maybe the option for a lot of people is if you're just getting into ARs or you want to have your own 80% lowers that you know you don't want recorded for your own privacy, which you are totally able to do legally, um, consider going the 80% option. Percent consider going with a jig and going with a an 80% lower. I mean, yeah, def- I mean, if you want to go that route, by all means, give it a shot. But um, you know, if you've never done anything before with any type of router or machining even like drilling a hole in metal um you know all i can say i mean i don't want to sound mean or anything but just don't don't be surprised if you mess it up yeah we we're doing this or not doing this with the idea that we may mess them up when we get them put together when we do them. but obviously you're gonna use a lot of you know machining lubricant um the way that this thing is set up the way that the little handheld router is set up it's got its own adapter that you put on it so that you do like part one, step two, step three, you just pull off the plates and put a new plate on and you do everything. It's like literally just tracing is all you're doing and you're hollowing out the lower and then it's done. So that's that's something that um, that we may or may not be looking at doing. And I keep saying that because I'm not going to say whether or not I bought one. And I, I will say this, if you do buy from 80% arms, I probably shouldn't say this on air, but when you get your receipt, it doesn't actually say what you bought. <laughs> So I don't know. That's uh, that's kind of a nice little option there. So you, you made a you made a purchase, but it didn't say what it was. So they've got an order number, but they didn't say what was on there. Um, what else we got here? So over here on the YouTube side, I'm sorry guys, I've been watching the comments a whole lot here. Somebody had mentioned a comment. Guns and Barbecue said, "Did you gentlemen happen to catch the video I tagged you guys in on Wednesday?" Guys, do you know what Guns and Barbecue is talking about? Defense Dad, what's the video? I'm sorry, man. I, I when I get home from from school and work and stuff, I'm planning for the next day, so I don't get a chance to watch a lot of videos. Yeah, I, know, I haven't seen the video that we were talking about it on Jason Stewart's show the other day. What he is it? Challenged everybody. He's challenging people to go out, read their state constitution, and then do a video talking about if they have a Second Amendment protection clause, basically in yeah. their state's constitution. Nebraska and does. Yeah, do what it is. You know, talk about how it's worded and whatnot, that kind of thing. As hard as it is I've to believe, for years about states that don't have it in their constitution. As hard as it is to believe, Illinois does. Yeah, I think he said there's five that don't. Wow. So that's something, and that might be a little interesting. Check out your state's constitution because when they start infringing on your rights, you know, go lobby and go, uh, go, go protest in in your in your House of Representatives or whatever in your Unicam or whatever you have and. You know, tell them it's not right if they don't have that in the state constitution, man. Yeah, I want to touch on something real quick, too. You were talking about as far as, you know, cheap AR or affordable, Mm -hmm. I should say. So double check your websites because if you're just wanting to build just a basic one and you can source the lower and the upper for the same website, on average, I'm seeing $100 to $150 less by buying the complete lower and upper separate rather than buying the other, which is. A no-brainer, but a lot of people may may not catch that. I think it's because those companies isn't there a surcharge on a complete AR-15 when a gun comp- when a company sells it? They have a, like an extra fifty or seventy-five dollars that gets paid somewhere, or somebody gets it. An There's excise like a, tax is that? I think that's what it is on complete ARs. The the company has to pay that to the government, or there's something weird about it. That's the reason. That's one of the reasons why it costs more. Yeah, because if you go to PSA and buy an upper and a lower, or buy the upper and a parts kit and a stripped lower, it's like two hundred dollars cheaper than buying an off the rack. Pre-made PSA AR-15. Well, even if you might, not, I mean, not necessarily a stripped one, but a complete, all you have to do is put it together and put your takedown pins in and you're done. So to me, that's not worth $150. Yeah. But a lot yeah. of new people, like I was not too long ago, may, may not realize that until they get it. Uh, wait, it's not worth it to build a bear or it's not worth it to I'm Wait. saying if you go under a complete firearm and they send you a complete rifle, when you can buy that exact same complete upper, upper lower, all you have to do is put it together and, and and set the pins, just click them in, and you're paying $150 because they do that for you and put it in one box instead of two. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I well, and then the excise tax is part of it, too. Yeah, like if you just get the basic M4, and I keep using PSA as an example because that's one of the first places that I'll look just to – Compare prices to everybody. I'm not, you know, endorsed by them or anything, but yeah, if you just get their basic M4 upper, like their pistol upper, and then you get just the basic pistol lower, you know, just like a with like a just like a cack blade on it or whatever, it's going to be like 150 bucks cheaper than buying it complete out the door. Yeah, and you still got to pay the shipping. You still got to pay the the transfer fee anyway. So it's 
it's a no brainer. Just buy the two separate parts and put them together. And I didn't know that I looked back on my receipt. So back in 2012, that's when I bought my DPMS Oracle and I paid six fifty for it. When I didn't, I don't know, was PSA even around in 2012 or not? What, what kind of options were out there for ARs in 2012? Well, are we still looking at Colts and we're still looking at like you were looking at Colts, Anderson. Masters, Anderson was out there because I didn't know anything about you know buying guns online back in 2012. I just it was the least expensive AR that Shields had back in 2012, and so I bought it and it was 649. That was this is before I even knew SS Pond. <laughs> so I don't know. See, yeah, I mean, I definitely paid a lot more at that point. So when it comes to the AR 15s, yeah, do what Defense Dad says, just buy your separate components. Now, you got to watch out. Um, something else to talk about here. Let's kind of go into this area now. Um, the AR-47, okay, if you're looking at going with an AR-47, because some guys are thinking, well, I don't want to spend 900 on an AK, and I don't want 556. You can go with the 762 by 39 AR pattern rifle, and let me talk about your options, okay? Um, you can get a 762 by 39 mil spec sort of upper from like Bear Creek Arsenal or Radical Firearms, and it will mate to a standard AR-15 lower, and then for magazines, you've got to use, well, you should use a 762 by 39 AR pattern magazine, like a C Products Defense Duramag or an ASC mag. I've got one called the Unimag, and that thing takes eight different calibers, which is pretty cool. I'm going to grab that here in a second, so I'll have you guys talk for a moment. But my experiences, I've had great experiences with AR-47s on my channel. Um, I had a 16-inch rear-charging Bear Creek upper with a PSA AR-15 lower. That had no trouble at all. The... Um, AR-47 pistol that you see in my channel, I did have to swap out the firing pin for an enhanced firing pin in order for it to work with steel case to let ammo. It shot wolf just fine and wolf polyformance. So that's an option. Now, where you got to be careful is I was looking at these this morning. This PSA has the KS-47 lowers, and it's an AR-15 pattern lower that takes the AK-47 magazines, kind of like CMMG, but they are proprietary. So you can't buy that and then get yourself like a, a Bear Creek 762 by 39 up or slap it on and expect it to work because apparently they're a little bit wider. So you have to have the PSA upper. And there's a lot of people, if you read the, the, the comments on this, this lower on PSA's website, they sold a bunch of these and they have not produced any uppers to go with it. There's people that bought these in October, 2020 or people that waited three or four months for any upper to come up for sale and they haven't. So I don't know what PSA's deal is, but if you're looking at gaming, like if you're at a gun show, and you're like, ooh, this thing takes AK mags. I'm just going to get a 762 upper for it. It ain't going to happen. So just keep that in mind. If you're KS47s, what's that? The 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 KS47. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't yeah, know. Maybe I've, maybe because I've got, the, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've got a friend who who bought the uh, two lowers and the upper. He was only able to get one upper off of arms list, and that was like 500 bucks. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know if it's just a limited run or they just weren't that popular. The fact is, proprietary is automatically going to cut down on your selling audience. Whereas what I run, like I said, the Bear Creek Upper with the uh, the PSA lower. Had the you know. in stock since 2019. Oh, geez. Okay, okay. So don't go that route if you're looking at one or thinking about buying one. I didn't even know they were proprietary. I was like, maybe I'll go that route because I got a buttload of AK mags, and um, you know, Squid or Nice Strike. Maybe they'll take the uh, the Croatian mags, huh? <laughs> Oh yeah, they they take they even take the Travis P11 Special Croatian Max with the uh, with the yeah. uh, you know with, with the Dremel marks. So if anybody's ever seen the channel, I don't know why I took the video down, but there was the, I bought the Croatian Mags off of PSA before I read the reviews on them, and everybody was complaining about how they don't fit their AKs. Like I even dremeled the heck out of one to try to get it to fit. It didn't work. He so did I sent three it to videos Nystrike. on dremeling it. Okay, and, and I sent him Tapco <laughs> magazines that did work. Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds like the experience I had with and, the Pro Mag AK Mag. And, and when, when Travis yeah. sent me those magazines, I just took one out. I didn't even look at it. I just popped it in my AK and it locked in just fine. Yeah, those. <laughs> the, the, I had one Pro Mag AK Mag, and that thing would not lock into the rifle, no matter what I tried to do to modify that thing's locking lugs on the mag itself. It did not matter. Not lock into the rifle at all. Oh, that is insane. I need you guys to hold down the fort for about five seconds so I can grab my Duramag, okay? Or my, uh, right. my Unimag. I want to show this magazine off to you guys. All right, give me a second. Speaking of magazines, if you guys out there have a Taurus G2C and you want extended magazines, the Sig Sauer P226 9mm magazines will fit, lock, and feed. So yep. if you get your hands on a high capacity P226 no, 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 no. standard capacitor. Standard capacity. Standard capacity for 226 is 12 rounds. Uh, no, 15 for the 9mm. My bad. Yeah. Um, 
So if you can find a 20 rounder, which is a higher capacity, okay. it will fit, lock, and feed in a Taurus G2C. You're welcome. Mm, my brother's got a, a Taurus G2C. Yeah. I love telling him about that. And, and AWAC, AWAC, we, we, we proved this on video, but uh, the 226 magazine, you know, the 40 Smith & Wesson and 357 SIG, will fit in the 229. Correct. Yeah, but nobody likes either one of those calibers, so who cares? I do. I like the I do. Big. It's a good good cartridge. By the way, it also like works with the G3 and the G3C with the SIG mags, because they use the same mags as the G2C. So if you have one of those, it'll work with the G3 and the G3C as well. Look around, because I think there's some Canic magazines, like some 20-round Canic magazines that are compatible with either the G3 or the G2, the PT-111 G2, G2Cs. You can get, I think Canics are compatible also. They're all made by Mecca, and they really do kind of fit the same almost specifications. So I think the, the Canics will fit without any kind of modification. Um, real quick, I never thought about talking about this. Okay, so if somebody wants to go pistol caliber carbine options, you can go with the Ruger PCC. What are the options, you guys, Night Strike? The, the, what 9mm AR9? So if you want to get yourself an AR pattern rifle, maybe you got some AR accessories around, or you want to get into AR9s, which is a, an AR pattern rifle that shoots 9mm, what are some of the options or what can you do if you want to get into that? That's kind of an area that I don't really dabble because I just bought an AKV and I don't worry about it, but yeah. My whole issue is I'm, I'm considering just, you know, scrapping my AR9 project and just making it uh, 556 instead just because the factor that, you know, the AR9 uppers are like 400 bucks right now and I'm not paying 400 bucks for an AR upper. If yeah, you the, want a the... pistol caliber AR platform rifle or a carbine or pistol, there's only one name you need to know. New Frontier Armory. Okay, so what do they have, Squid? They've got uh, 9, 40, 45, 10 millimeter. You can get pistol length barrels, carb carbine length barrels for the 9 millimeter. You can use MP5 mags or you can use Glock mags. Everything else that they, they have uh, utilizes a Glock mag. You can buy a complete rifle or you can buy the lower and then buy whatever upper you want. And you can trick it out whatever way you want, accessorize it whatever way you want. But New Frontier Armory, they're made right there in Nevada. And they've got they've got good quality stuff. Didn't I'm going to go over their website here in a moment. Make, but... uh, crappy uh, lower receivers, Palmer? Uh, no. They got Polymer lower receivers, but they're not crappy. They're not? All right, good. Over on PSA, if you want an ARV, if you want to get a PCC that's not like you're not using like an AR lower with any kind of a mag adapter or anything, right. you're gonna drop some. You're gonna drop a pretty penny on it right now. So you're looking at over a thousand. My AKV, I think I paid nine hundred for it, and that was one of the entry level AKVs. So if you want an ARV, I think the AKVs are probably sold out. I didn't bother clicking on it, but you can get these lowers, but they are proprietary uppers, if I'm not mistaken. The ARV is so you got to watch out for that if you want to go that route. Uh, let's see if they even have AKVs in stock. I'm not sure if they do. I think so, Ghost put out a video that has a, an adapter for your regular AR mag that turns it into a 9 yeah. mag. It'll take Glock mags, if I'm not mistaken. Is that is that what it is? No, it's a sleeve that goes in your actual AR, just your regular yeah. people. Oh, I'll, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. I'll, do, yep. I'll do a video on, on the one I've got because it, uh, it, basically, it basically locks into the, uh, to the mag well. And it converts it to nine millimeter from five five six. I've been hurry up and get one of these. They got the banana magazines back in stock for the uh, oh, AKVs. Okay. Those have been out of stock for six months, man. And look at the wow! Sticker. Look at the sticker. Ellis must have been busy painting those in the back room, huh? No. <laughs> what I do like about the AKV is how cheap the magazines are. Seventeen bucks for thirty five round mags, and then they also have a fifteen round extension for like another twenty that you yeah. can buy for. So you have fifty round magazines for it. But yeah, all the all the AKVs are out of stock. You can if you get your notification for it, you literally got to buy it within five minutes if you want it. Um, I did get a notification one time for this one right here. This was the one that was featured in the Grantham video. It was like eleven hundred dollars, and I didn't want to drop that kind of change on it. So I, I got mine for nine hundred. Then I put the little cheese grater, uh, what do you call it, your gas tube cover on it. Yeah, yeah. If you want one of these, you pretty much need to uh, need to sign up for the email so you get notified when they're in stock. Yeah, I still want one with the Russian wood killer stock. Oh, I know, right there, the red wood triangle side folder, or any of that. Yeah, that cherry color. Uh -huh. That's beautiful, man. I know we were looking at these a year ago before I bought mine. 
kind of drooling over how cool the different options are. And they do have a uh, stock you can get. Well, haven't had in stock for a long time, but side folder you can get for it. What's interesting is they still sell these with the SBA three. So they must not care about anything that's going on with uh, legislation and stuff like that for the SBA threes and where we're sitting on that right now. And I kind of gave up on watching videos on it because until something comes out, you know, I'm not going to really make any changes. I'm going to be honest. So I did just because I'm a gun channel, I did slap on a, uh, a CAC M2 blade on my AKV. I took off the SBA three. Uh, Cause if I'm going to shoot any new videos on it, I just don't want to potentially get myself in any kind of, any kind of issues. So new frontier armory, here we go. Squib. What's the thing about these guys now? What are we looking for? So they've got the C9 they've got, is what we want. They've got aluminum and polymer lowers, but you can get a regular 556 AR15 from them or you can get a pistol caliber carbine that uses Glock mags. About the only thing redeemable about Glocks is that everybody seems to want to use their mags. But if you're an MP5 guy, you can get the 9mm lower that takes MP5 mags if if that's your thing. So unfortunately sold out of nine millimeter AR style firearms, which is sign, sign up for notifications and you'll get an email when they come back into stock. Oh, they do make their, they have their own. Oh, the Archon. Are they the importers for the Archon? I, I haven't dealt with any of their handguns. I mean, okay. they've got a regular store right there in North Las Vegas where you could, you know, buy other products there. They don't just sell their stuff, but they also have a factory in town where they make all of their parts in house. So mm. everything on that gun is, is oh, made nice. right there in house. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I shouldn't say everything. They, I think, uh, a few of the things that they, uh, they get from other, uh, American manufacturers like springs and whatnot, but mm -hmm. yeah. So if you've already got a Glock, you've already got Glock mags, you want a, a compatible carbine, you can, you can get there lower and buy whatever upper, you know, if, if you want to do pistol, you're going to go, uh, uh, SBR, that route or you want to fool around with the brace thing or what have you that's that's your on you or yeah, you can for, get a 16 yeah. inch carbine and then you ain't got to do anything so okay okay so you got a lot of you got a lot of options then uh here's who i went through for or maybe didn't go through for uh the 80 percent lowers here's here's who i've been looking at going through for 80 percent lowers amt american made tactical and then these were in stock and ready to ship the last time i bought them Okay, so they are unfortunately out of stock on everything. Okay, they had they had stuff in stock and they were shipping in two to four days. So the demand must be insane. When these guys run out, things are getting pretty bad. Uh, let's see if we can at least get a kit. So if you get a jig kit, they do have the jig kit in stock. But yeah, the one that we bought is a, a really nice modular jig that I'll take, you know, the AR9s or the LR308s and, and the AR15, 80% lowers, so... Uh, the bits are pretty expensive. That's one of the catches about them is you're looking at, you know, 50 to $75 for the bits. So that's an option too. If you want to go ahead and build one, I can stop sharing, but uh, all right. So now that pretty much leaves us to, again, the whole budget option, as you can see, you're basically looking at paying, you know, re full retail price, if not more at these, you know, any, any more these days for the ARs or the AKs, depending on which route you want to go. Uh, we did talk a lot about rifles last week. You know, if you want a good deal on a bolt action, there's a great a good a lot of good deals and rebates going on right now, on like your Savage Axis and stuff like that. Um, so I mean, you know, if you want to go that route, the bolt actions, and, and if you want an inexpensive rifle, you've got you know like the Ruger 1022 option also, and those seem to stay about the same price as they always have been, or they're creeping up to their normal MSRP, which is you know that stuff was selling below that, but now it's basically selling for its regular off the shelf price. I don't know, guys. What other options are there? What, what's sad about this is the thumbnail for the video that I made, that I posted for this, my Remington 710 243. That was a two hundred dollar, two hundred fifty dollar pawn shop gun all day. Nobody liked them. They had some polymer parts inside of them. People didn't like that. Remington did it to lower the price. Now you look that gun up on Gun Broker. It's four hundred fifty dollars. So things have basically doubled. That's kind of the reality where we're sitting right now. But what do we have for options for like an inexpensive rifle? What what can a well, person do? Um, since I've been uh, thrown into the precision and bolt action gang again for like mm -hmm. the sixth time, mm -hmm. um, you can pick up a Remington 700 for like 400 bucks. Uh, I've seen them at uh, Palmetto State Armory uh, for, you know, really, really cheap. You can, it's a very good option, even though they are, and I rag on them a lot, even though they are a Freedom Group type rifle and their fit and finish is not the best. 
you put a decent optic on top of those and you can reach out to a thousand yards no problem whether it's 308 65 creedmoor or some of the other oddball calibers that are out there now okay. cool thing about the remington 700 is their actions are just like an ar upper in the fact that you can get pre-fit barrels that come from the factory you unscrew the old one and you screw the new one in it's already head spaced ready to go and you can have something that would be an incredible attack driver some websites will even let you custom custom make your barrel like with different twist rates different rifle profile uh rifling profiles mm -hmm. different um you know materials you can add different types of uh stress relief uh like all that all that kind of awesome stuff you could change like what kinds of thread pitch you want on your your muzzle or you know how long the barrel is you know you could you go way into detail with what kind of barrel you want and uh what you want for a precision rifle and that's essentially what i did with my 300 win mag is i used that regular standard savage barrel that was on it uh, Savage is my go-to rifle brand as of right now because they're relatively cheap rifles. I mm -hmm. up oh yeah, yeah. Or uh, Thompson. Thompson's you know pretty inexpensive yeah. too, and Thompson's they got a price point that works for most people. You know, for the most part. Yeah, around three hundred dollars, yeah. three fifty to get into it. Yeah, Something you, know, you put it. You know, Go ahead. On those, there there'll be a great option for you, and you can upgrade them along the way. There's many different companies out there that will make like stocks and chassis systems and. Uh, magazine system it's 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 almost as prolific as the ar uh, market when it comes to upgrading and modifying and sometimes those chassis systems will allow you to use uh, ar stocks and uh okay. buffer tube assemblies so yeah like the ruger precision and stuff yeah Correct. Yep. something to think about on the used rifle market is be sure you're getting it chambered in a caliber that there may someday be ammo for. Do or don't do, right? Do is what you're saying? Do, yes. Make sure that you get it for something that you can find ammo for. 308, I think you're going to be safe. 762 by 39 right. like I did because it was cheaper back in the day. I could get 40 rounds of 762 for, you know, $9 at Walmart when Walmart was still carrying that. Um, you know, the problem here in Nebraska is we've got a lot of deer hunters. So your things like your 243s and 270s, they sell heavily. So sometimes the shelves can be pretty thin, but they've ten generally got, you know, a dozen different grain weights and different types of rounds you can get in 243 or 270. Uh, 300, was it 300 Win Mag? AWAG, is that what you said you're running? Yeah, I'm running both uh, Savage Model 10, which is their short action in 308 mm -hmm. Winchester. And I'm running a Savage Model 110, which is their long action in 300 Winchester Magnum. Now, the barrel that I have on it is from a company called Excalibur. And you can go on their website and they have prefits for Savage. You know, they have um, uh, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll just we'll go. We'll go to their homepage. How about we do that? Real quick, AY, while well, I got your attention here, hey, from the engineering pers perspective, hang on, hang on one second, single shot. AY, what's your thoughts on the KE Arms complete polymer lower from Brownells? Um, that one that you're, you have? Yeah, $200. It's got everything integrated into one. I'd say it's an okay deal. I haven't seen any issues with them. I know that. Um, it looks what, like almost like something H&K would make, you know? It's kind yeah. of. Yeah. Um, what, what, is, what is that one YouTube channel? Forgotten Weapons. Um, what's his other channel that he has i think it's like in range or something they did a they, like a way way back they did a um uh, i guess a review of this and they like kind of like beat it to death and mm -hmm. apparently it's apparently it's uh a pretty decent like lower but you're like it like it is there you're kind of fixed with one grip style and one stock type so you know make that for what you may not be able to swap out the safety lever either if it's not ambi is it ambi i don't know if it is you might be able to change out the the safety selector because that's yeah it's part. well yeah but you don't have your pistol grip there's no way to get the in the detent out of it yeah huh. i'm sure it's got some maybe there's some way that it actually comes out or i don't know maybe it's manufactured from the factory like that when they put it together i'm yeah because it looks like it's kind of permanent but but anyway that's just that's just an idea on that so um uh single shot what do you want to say real quick yeah, I had a question for AWAG. Yeah, go ahead. I am looking for a short chamber 
65 Creedmoor barrel. You got any suggestions? Um, okay, what what action type? What are you what are you putting it on? I got the uh, TC compass, but that throat on that thing is about three eighths of an inch, way too long as far as I'm concerned. Uh, okay, so that's compass. What? Uh, who makes that again? TC Thompson. Thompson Center. Thompson Center. My bad. Yep. I'm sorry. While you're looking that up real quick, I just want to show up, show you guys the Unimag that I was talking about earlier. So if you want to save some money on magazines, I got a, I bought a couple of these. It's called a Unimag by Ross Defense Systems. And it is a magazine that's actually chambered for eight different calibers. It's got a follower that basically shapes to fit whatever round you throw in it. And so it's got, it'll take 30 rounds of 5.56, 30 rounds of 300 blackout, which, you know, you can use. 300 blackout and 556 five, mags. I don't. I use the Magpul 300 300 blackout mags, but that's just me. 26 rounds of 224 Valkyrie. 24 rounds of one of the Grendel calibers. I don't know which one specifically. 26 rounds of 6.8 SPC. 25 rounds of 762 by 39. 29 rounds of 545 and 12 rounds of 458 SOCOM. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to test this on the channel. We'll run it through some 762 by 39. We'll try it with 300 blackout. We'll try it with 556. Five, I don't have the uh, 224 Valkyrie anymore. Rich has got that, so I might have to send this off to Rich to test. And I don't have anything in 545, but yeah, it's kind of a cool little design. These are like $26, $27, I think. So, uh, you build a lower. <laughs> Go ahead. Still haven't got a lower build for that Valkyrie yet. Need to do it, buddy. Yeah. One of these days, if I ever get around to it, I keep having to get other stuff and it keeps getting in the way. Like yeah, I was gonna I say, to, just get a complete lower from PSA and just be done with it. There's, I have to buy a new computer I'm waiting to get here because my laptop's starting to die and that took oh. care of my gun budget. So. Oh, no, I understand. No, I, I hear you, man. I hear you. So cool. when it comes yeah. to Thompson Center Compass, uh, honestly, I would just say, um, you know, they, they have a proprietary thread pitch for their barrels, so it's not like you can get a pre-fit or something made. You'll actually end up having to get a barrel blank taking it to a gunsmith and have them make uh, the chamber cut and the thread pitch on it. So like after that, by when you're all said and done, I'd just save the money and get uh, a Remington 700 or a Savage short action. Oh yeah. yeah. I was, uh, that was a thought there with that Savage short action. I like that. I've got a, a 110 and 223, uh, 116, I'm sorry, in 223, left-handed. Yeah, and, uh, the cool like thing, about, thing awfully well. The very... cool thing about the uh, savages is, even though you do have a short action, it's for two, two, mm -hmm. three. You can buy a new bolt face because savages have separate bolt faces from the um, the bolt body, so yep. you can you can change it up to a three hundred eight diameter, um, you know, head on that, and then you can swap out the barrel with little to no effort. Prefit um, savage prefits uh, are like four hundred bucks. For something that's like super match quality, that's not too bad though. Really, for for a high quality uh, barrel, I might consider going that direction. Cool. Um, other options, guys, for for rifles and good deals on rifles. Don't rule out estate sales and auctions, but maybe have an idea what the market price is for the gun that you're bidding on. You know, we had mentioned gun shows. If you have them nearby. Check out your pawn shops, obviously. Check out your little mom-and-pop gun stores. There might be something that's been on the rack for a while. Like I always like to say, and like the experts say, you know, cash is king. So if you've got cash, there are times when you can negotiate. But anymore, you know, it's like Toyota Camrys and Honda Accords. There's only so much leeway they're going to give you on price because they know they're going to sell whether you negotiate with them or not. So that's the only thing that might be going on. So not to leave it on like a depressing note or anything, but I mean, there is basically a, a, a entry-level price that you can expect to pay anymore for an AK and an AR and... And things like that. And who knows, maybe maybe in a couple of years, you know, things will go back. Let's hope so. But I kind of feel like we've passed that past that renaissance point of, of cheap guns, you know, when you could get, you know, we could get literally get an AR-15 for $300. You know, we've done videos on this and talked about it before. So that, that takes back to the first time we went through this mm -hmm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. Why the hell are we in this situation now? We should have known better. Oh, yeah. No, it we did. The, the 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 pro 2a community i mean when you look at what what the what the anti 2a uh, establishment has raised for funds and their effort and what they've done to bring us down 
I mean, it's it's insane the fundraising and the money they dump into these things and the backing. Well, they've got a lot of corporate backing, you know, which which doesn't like us. Obviously, a lot of different industries that uh, that are not pro two A that that we got to battle against on a daily basis. So I know Tony, it's one of those things where I think we were living high on the hog. You know, it was it was five months after the election or four months after the election, and gun prices tanked and everything was cheap. And oh, we're set for another eight years, right? Uh, yeah, but that's when you yeah. should have been buying, not not just oh, and I was the industry I, going, but hey, to, I, you yep. know, buy low, sell high. That's how we make money, the Smith Barney way, right? My uh, all my, mo- I'm looking at my stocks, the ammo, and my receipts, and you know, I put the I put the dates on my ammo when I bought it. A lot of my ammo was bought in 2016 when I could get you know a thousand rounds of nine millimeter for 179 dollars delivered, tax free. <laughs> so that's when I was stocking up. I was buying a case, you know, every every couple months, I buy a case of this or buy a case of that, or you know. We said before, just go get it at the store. Every time you go there, drop it in your cart. If we knew then what we knew now. Oof. Oh, I think man. there's a lot of people out there who weren't paying any attention the last time and the last time and the last time and the last time. Or they they, they either weren't they weren't interested or they were, but they just weren't paying any attention. Yeah. And now they're all panicking and scrambling and causing the 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 uh you know low sock and the high prices and all that stuff. And it's like, you're your own worst enemy. I don't know what you were, why you weren't doing something three years ago or six years ago or 20 years ago, but Hey, you know, well, you know, civil unrest was a big wake up call for people in the suburbs that they needed to arm themselves, whether they were conservative or liberal or not. I mean, you know, you look at the numbers on, on that are being run for next checks and that's just one side of the, of the equation, but you know, looking at the numbers and the sales and stuff, I mean, it's it's obvious that there's a lot of scared people yeah, out there. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, yeah. why didn't you have a gun before then? Why didn't you this? Why didn't you that? And, and you know, if they say, well, I never have a need for it, I never this, I never that. You know, it's like right before Y2K, everybody ran out and bought a generator, you know, in December, and then nothing happened. So mm-hmm. you know, maybe people have that sort and of mentality of more- that it's just, it's just going to pass, and, 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 it, and, and it will. It will. I think prices will go back down, but... It's just interesting how people passed up a deal and passed up a deal and passed up a deal and prioritized other stuff. And now they're, they're freaking out and, and they really don't need to. Mm-hmm. You know, it took me one time in about 2014 to pay $50 for a brick of 22. Yep. To realize mm-hmm. that I ain't getting in this situation ever again. Yeah. That was that after Sandy Hook. Yeah. Whenever. And then another yep. 22 disappeared for like, Two years, and, and you know, because then there were ammo mafias that were snagging it and stuff, which you know they could do that if they wanted to, but yeah, yeah, the 22 is always a sore subject with everybody because everybody's like, Well, you know, you should have been there to buy it in the morning when those people were buying it. I know, I know, but I also didn't want to get into a hoarding mentality, I want to leave a little bit for the next guy at the same time, you know. Tell what the next guy, no, I'm just saying, when I got mine and I don't think I need to go in excess of it, you know, there's other stuff I'd rather focus on, I'd rather focus on getting another gun or getting in, getting a different caliber instead of. You know, just keep buying and buying and buying one caliber. Of course, it might be the last time I can ever get it in my lifetime, so I might be making a mistake, but, you know. I got enough twenty two to last me the rest of my life. Good. And I, I did that probably grandkids' lives, too. But. Mm-hmm. Well, and you got to think about that. See, I, we have no children to pass our, our firearms or ammunition on to, so, you know, if I if that was a situation, I'd be pallets of it in my house, buddy. But I only think about how much I can actually shoot in a year, how much I think I'm going to need, or which calibers are my you priority calibers. Here, if you want to, Travis. What's that? Oh, no, we've already got this all taken care of. It's already We already have an idea for what's going to happen with everything. So it's all okay, good. I just need a list of who's getting what so I know who needs to have you know contracts put out. I them. have nothing California compliant. I can't help you, Calaveras. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I can send I'll you another Mosin. contracts out on people, do you think I really care if it's California compliant? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably not. Probably I, not. I, I told I told single shot the same thing. So you know. <laughs> yep. Exactly. All right, guys. I think we're gonna go ahead and call it. We've been going for a little over an hour and a half right now. Just the idea of talking about are there any good deals out there? Keep looking. But if you're gonna be stepping into the world of ARs and AKs and just about anything anymore, you probably won't know any better on prices if you weren't pricing them before. Can, so. can, can I yeah. add on this? What's up? If you're looking for a cheap rifle right now, your best bet is a 22. Uh, it's sad to say, but it is. Well, but 22 LRs then in a lot of places now too, and the you prices, know, the gun show prices on 22 LR have gone skyrocketed too. Right, right. If right. you don't have any, that's another thing I find extremely funny today. Mm-hmm. There's lots and lots of attention being paid to 22 LR on like YouTube videos and stuff yeah. where people. 
three years ago said that it wasn't worth having. Now I've been a proponent for 22 for ever. Oh yeah. Well, it's just, you know, when you can't get your other calibers and your 5.56 goes dry or your 300 blackout goes dry, you fall back on your 22 to practice and to shoot and take the kids out and take the family out. But then then that goes dry, you go buy it. Well, everybody else is in the same mentality as you. And so that's why you can't get the 22. That's what happened after Sandy Hook, you know? Compared compared to the price of of other caliber of ammunition right now, if if all you do is buy it, 22 Mm -hmm. is still the cheapest of the bunch. What's it well, going for per round now? No, prices. I'm still able to get, you know, bricks of 325 Federal for $17.99. But at the gun shows, you know, I'm seeing 50 to $75 for a brick of 500. Right. Like Remington Golden That's Bullets or whatever. You know, crazy. I, I, last That's I bought, I paid 2.9 cents a round. And I bought a bit. Yeah. Yeah, here locally, like at the Shield store, when they get the 22 LR in stock, it's not. What's really crazy is trying to find stuff like CCI Mini Mag now. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm online sixty five dollars for a box of one hundred rounds of CCI Mini Mag. I mean, that's if you pay that price, either you don't know any better or you just are desperate. You know, I mean, seriously, that's that is crazy to pay those kinds of prices. Yeah, sixty five bucks. God. Yeah, for a box of one hundred rounds of CCI mini mags. That's what I saw at a couple different tables at the last gun show that I went to. And it's gun show prices. They're paying for a table, and that might be the only place they go and sell. And that's the price oh, yeah. that they're asking, you know. And and that's that's their choice, you know. I've got a few extra boxes. I mean, might be interested in selling. <laughs> Here's uh just okay. Let's let's. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but uh, okay. Gun broker selling a thousand rounds of CCI mini mag for two thirty nine, two hundred thirty nine dollars for a thousand, uh seventy two dollars for is this for a single for five hundred rounds? Well, that's bidding price right now. Uh, I'm just kind of looking and seeing what's available right now. Everything is pretty much bidded on right now. There's really no. Let me see if there's any buy it nows. Because I was trying to find some. I'd like to get some more because it runs great through my Taurus TX22, and I've got bricks and bricks of other 22 ammunition, just not the the mini mags because I ne- didn't, never really needed it for my bolt actions that I would play around with. Uh, uh, I Here bought a thousand for ninety bucks. Yeah, that's it's double that price right now. Here's well, no, here's five hundred for one seventy nine. A thousand for two thirty nine. Trying to find just a single package if I can. Uh, somebody's selling a whole bunch of a twenty one hundred rounds for three hundred eighty dollars. So yeah, I mean if you like that stuff, I it maybe it's, I don't know if it's because those those calibers just aren't really being produced right now by those factories because they're focusing on you know CCI does Blazer so that maybe they're focusing on the nine millimeter instead. And, and that's why we're not seeing so much of that mini mag out there in the market or even on the shelves in stores right now. Yeah. I think all the Rimfire stuff is produced in separate factories. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm and then, uh, except for my Mark One, because my other 22s run the other stuff better. Yeah. All right, guys. I think we will go ahead and wrap it up. We'll leave it at that. We've been going for almost two hours now, and I've got some stuff I need to work on today. So we're going to have at it. So let's go ahead and let the panel go ahead and give us their final plugs. And then we will give a little shout out to people watching over there on the YouTube side. We got 62 people watching right now. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a great time. Uh, Defense Dad, we'll start off with you. Give us your little final plug. Oh, thanks for having me. It was a good conversation. That's mm-hmm. about it. Cool, cool. All right. And who knows? We may go back, and I'm not running out of topics for Caliber Corner, but it's kind of fun to go back and talk about some of these topics from three years ago because it was a completely different situation. They're kind of fun to watch and kind of sad when you watch me do the screen shares for how cheap the guns were back then. Uh, feeling nostalgic. All right, Defense Dad, thanks for joining in. Uh, Rich White, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, yeah, be sure, like we said earlier at the beginning of the show, to check out over on uh, Ellis's channel, the Outlaw Half Field, tonight at 9 p.m. for the Classic Wrestling Show, if he's able to do it tonight. And then tomorrow night, this week, Unloaded, on the Unloaded Media channel at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. And be careful with pistachios. They will spontaneously combust. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I got a whole bag of shelled ones sitting over on the counter in the kitchen uh, right now. Once they're processed and everything, they're fine. But before oh. they process them, they're so oily that they have regulations about how many you can store in a building. They have caused major fires because pistachios are so oily. All it takes is a difference in temperature, or the temperature to go up, and they will spontaneously combust. So I need to make a YouTube video. Can you use pistachios as kindling for your, your campfire, huh? Yeah, somewhere along those lines. Yeah. Interesting. Even after they roast it, they still have the oil issues? No, it's before they uh, do all that. 
Oh, you okay. If you're okay. up and in the store, you're fine. But if you're like a pistachio farmer or something like that, you got to be careful how you store them. And they have very, they have more stringent regulations on how you store pistachios than uh, ammo manufacturers storing gunpowder. Hey, because we've had we've had grain gunpowder. elevator explosions out here in Nebraska. Corn dust, baby. Yeah, we've had grain elevators. Actually, I I actually had a friend whose dad was was killed in one of those uh, incidents. So grain dust is insane, man. Those yeah. elevators. Sugar, sugar in, in uh, Cuba when sugar when Cuba was a big uh, sugar exporter back before Castro took over. They had a big uh, sugar processing plant explode from the sugar dust. Oh man, it's crazy somebody, stuff. Somebody lit a cigarette near that, the sugar storage place, and it just went up. Kaboom. That may be the new black powder substitute. So corn dust and sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there you go. Hundred percent natural, biodegradable, with, with, with non-toxic, with edible. Yeah, yeah with pistachio primers. Dang. <laughs> All right, Tony, give us your little closing plug, man. Uh, I ain't got one. <clears throat> All right, man. Tony, you have a wonderful no. day today. You going to try to join us next week? I don't know. Depends on my Hopefully. memory. All right. Well, I might just have to give you a call. Say, hey, Tony, join. just check your email. Just remember to check your email and you're good to go. Uh, yeah. You should email me like the day before. Okay. We can do that. We can definitely do that. Say, hey, man, come join us today. It's good to have you back, dude. It was good to be here. I enjoyed it. All right. We had a good discussion. Like I said, it's kind of deja vu since we talked about the same thing three years ago. Where... I, miss, I miss hanging out with Tony every morning. Your shows were epic, guys. Your shows were epic. I, I I miss you guys are the you guys are the you you Tony and Jimmy and and G Webs are the the reasons why I do what I do. You guys yeah. got me into the whole gun media thing, so I blame you guys for my habit. <laughs> Jimmy has disappeared off the play, face of the planet. Yeah, we got to find the man. We got to locate him. We got to track him down. Isn't he just in Phoenix? I I don't know where to go. Last, last I heard, last I heard, he was okay. All right, Squibby, give us your closing plug. Anything you want to say before we go? Um, I guess not. All right, man. Make sure you guys check out the Squiblo channel. Lots of good content over there. Uh, Calvaris 32 special. Any final words? Uh, just uh, you know what? Uh, five finger discount does not count for getting a discount of five. Uh, check out everyone's you know channels that are on the panel everyone produces great content and thanks for the invite cool man all right it's good having you here and i appreciate you getting up at the uh, crack of dawn to be with us and man it's good to have you so now you can start your day right now you can now you can start your morning <laughs> yeah that's true you know 5 45 a.m is a little early to get up on saturday but i'll do it for the show i'm two cup of thanks. coffees now i'm doing pretty good see now you can and... work on the house or go get go take the uh, go take wifey out for breakfast or something so you got a lot of options uh, i've got a three mile run to go do there you go. Oh man, Oof. go get him, Tiger. Go get him, Squibbo. Give yourself some credit, some credit, man. Your videos are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. I call it great content because they're fun to watch. If I feel like I learned something from it, then it was worth my time, man. Nah, they're just videos. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I stay humble, stay humble. I appreciate that. Uh, nice strike. Anything you would say before we go? Uh, shout out being infringed. Mm, amen, brother. <laughs> uh, uh, again, uh, check out GunTube.org. Uh, Check out the hit or miss season nice nine o'clock. You know the show Travis stitched. Uh, check out the Thursday, me, buddy. Thursday edition and uh, the Friday night strike. I wouldn't say I would just say I'm I'm on a sabbatical from the program. I would say I ditched the program. Travis, I'm on a sabbatical. I come back when you're I not can. On a sabbatical, you're not pregnant. I what? No, sabbatical has nothing to do with pregnancy. That's maternity leave, bro. Oh, that's right. <laughs> sabbatical is like oh. an educational leave that you go on to, you know, inform yourself of things. I get those two yeah, or, yeah, <laughs> maternity leave. That's awesome. Or something I like think that. we should uh, kick off next week's caliber corner with a biology lesson for Night Strike. No, 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 no. I'm good. <laughs> good. I, I know biology. <laughs> Look! Look up human reproduction on Google. It, it, it's just some of these terms. <laughs> Caliber Corner, episode number one sixty six, baby making one hundred and one. <laughs> Start off with the right environment. The right. I recommend some early nineties R and B music to set the mood and a bottle of booze. What's that? You know, I think Ooh. that episode would have to be on a different website, not YouTube. <laughs> we'll put that over on GunTube.org. <laughs> No, no, you probably could get away with it on YouTube because it's including a pictorial uh, presentation of the process of uh, the human reproduction cycle. No, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, some people get away with on YouTube under the label of being educational. Oh, uh, I know, or art, 
art, music yeah. videos. I'll tell you what, man. Fine line between music videos and porn some days. I'll tell you what. So, yeah, uh, all right. So make sure you guys check out Hit or Miss Tuesday nights at nine o'clock. It's the program that I'm taking an educational sabbatical from, and we'll get back there at some point. So don't worry about that. Nice strike. I'll be with you over winter break, and I'll be I'll be with you guys over the summertime, like I was. So, uh-huh. and who knows? Things will things will things will give me a little more free time. Maybe I won't be so tired in the evening. So, all right. Okay, moving on. A Wag still with us. A Wag, ready to start your day? Yeah. Ready, Freddy. I got to go change oil on my truck, and I'm ready to go. So go. Make sure you check out the AWAG 1000 channel. Yeah. Right, you got it. We doing a nice shooting today? Um, probably not. I got a bunch of work to do, okay. hand loading and stuff that I want to get done. All right. Yeah, so I've been playing around this whole time with the um, ETS Group 40 round Glock magazine. Don't ask me why I bought this because it's the most stupid thing I've ever purchased from Palmetto State Armory. <laughs> live in New Jersey anymore. That's why you bought that. I mean, okay, the magazine in this Glock 19 that I have, it sticks out so far that you could straight up grab it with both hands. And I got pretty decently sized hands. You could grab it with both hands from the magazine and beat somebody with the gun. So if you needed extra stability on the line, like you could have somebody like, you know, you could have <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll leave it there. All right, make sure you guys check out AY 1000s channel. And last but not least, we got Single Shot. Single Shot, you gonna be all right, buddy? You ready to go? Give us your give us your little outro, bud. Oh yeah, you know we're headed uh, we're headed westbound here. Like I said there before, I headed out towards Michigan. Got a nice cool. day here now. It's not bad at all. Temperatures forty two. Got uh, a few clouds kicking around, but uh, check out the channel. I dropped a nice little uh, short fun video there to watch. Cool. And uh, thanks for having me on. Always enjoy the conversation. You guys uh, right on top of a lot of subjects that I like to listen to. So always having take a lot of fun, easy. God bless. America moves by truck. Always, always. And make sure you get over when they roll up on you. Get over. Get over. Always yield to faster moving traffic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. So this has been Caliber Corner, episode number 165, where we talked about low-cost and budget-friendly rifles, sort of. We hope you guys had a great time today. Now get out there and... Uh, Get out to the range and do some shooting. You guys all have fun and be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. Bye, Alicia. Shut up, Bye, Alicia. Adios, Alicia. Adios. Oh, Vitor's in for Alicia. Yeah, that's just good, Alicia. Good day.